Hello. This is Louis C.K. I'm on the virus. Saturday night, 9 p.m. in the East Coast. That's Led Zeppelin. Turn it up a little bit. I used to get very high and listen to this. I used to smoke a lot of pot with my face and the mouth part especially. I used to make marijuana pot go into my body. And I used to just sit in a chair. Turn it down a little because this is cacophonous and horrible and cunty. All right, turn it off, the music. Just turn it off. Turn it, don't fade it out. Just turn it off. Oh, this is going to... You know, I'm in a bad mood right now. I really am. This is... My goal tonight is... It's 9 p.m. Whoever is listening right now, I, my goal is that you fucking turn the channel before 9.10. Okay? You bunch of fucking radio listening cunts. I'm in a bad mood. It's hot in New York. My balls are surrounded by cotton. I've got boxer briefs on, and they're all wadded up. I have a pimple on my penis, and no one has fucked me in about three years. So how does that happen? All right. I was wearing a, uh, I'm wearing a Boston Red Sox cap today. <coughs> sorry. Not really sorry. Um, I'm wearing a Boston Red Sox cap, and... Um, people looking at me. I'm in New York City, so I'm on the subway, and people are looking at me. And I forget I'm wearing the cap. So, to me, people are just looking at the top of my head and grimacing, and I don't know why. And then all of a sudden I realize, oh, it's because I have a Red Sox cap on. And there's people really looking at me like, fuck you, because I have a baseball cap on with a another team's logo. And I just want to shit right in their mouths, because, you know what... I shit on the New York Yankees and the Red Sox. It's just fucking baseball. And it's it's a... You know what, man? Nobody black played for the New York Yankees till 1955. <laughs> that was eight years after Jackie Robinson started playing. Why do I hear phones ringing? Is that already somebody calling to say, get off the air, you fat, red-headed faggot? Nobody played for the Red Sox who was black until 1959, 12 years after Jackie Robinson. So all these teams should have changed their names at some point. Because everybody's supposed to love Yankees tradition. They should say post. They should say Yankees pre-no-nigger baseball and Yankees post-no-nigger baseball. That's what the Major League Baseball should be called. Major League We Let Niggers Play Now Baseball. And and I'm not going to say N-word, because I think that's the most offensive thing in the world. Because white people saying N-word, which I hear, like on CNN, like white newscaster ladies saying N-word. But you're saying nigger. You're putting the word nigger in the listener's head. And yet you're saying N-word. So you're, you're trying to get away with something. All right. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, Led Zeppelin. Marijuana. I did a lot of drugs when I was a kid, and now I'm a father of two, and I'm fat and I'm bald, and I have two Vicodin in my backpack <laughs> that I got at a dentist appointment five years ago. I have five-year-old Vicodin that is still my emergency, I need to be high drug. That's how sad life gets when you age and you get older and you have children. I wish I was still a teenager smoking pot and just sitting in a, on a chair going, my mom's a cunt. I don't think I ever called her a cunt. And not even in my head. My mom's not a cunt. Um, you know, I, she could even be listening. <laughs> I, I don't know. You know what, though? My mom is so great and so supportive that, uh, like, I could call her and say, hey, listen, can I call you a cunt for this radio show? And she'd be like, hey, if it helps, go ahead, dear. Anyway, um, I think, give out the phone number? Okay, he just held up a piece of paper that says give out the phone number. Is it this little thing right here? Yes, the one with the phone number on it. All right, oh, now you're being <laughs> sarcastic. It's the lowest form of shit humor. You should die in a fucking AIDS accident. 
that's where that's a thing where a lot of AIDS crashes into some other AIDS and it splatters everywhere and it goes in your mouth. 866-969-1969. Call that number if you want to talk to me about anything. Um, I'll I'll talk to you. If you want to call and and uh, and have a word with Louis CK, that's the number. Don't you like when I I, I talk to, about myself like I'm in the other room? <clears throat> oh, I got calls already. Uh, Kevin. Okay, let's hear let's hear what Kevin has to say. Kevin. Somebody just kill your babbling ass. What's that? Somebody kill your babbling ass. Already. Are Are you gonna kill me, really? No, I wish somebody would kill you. <laughs> wow, you back down really fast. That, that's really sad, Kevin. It's like, I'm going to kill you, man. Really? Well, I wish somebody would. Hey, hey that, I'm not going to do it. I wish somebody would do it. I know. I do, too, Kevin. All right. You have a good night, then, buddy. You, you too. Take care of yourself. <laughs> okay. This one? Yeah. That's how I call. All right. Folks, just bear in mind that there's no reason why this would go well. <laughs> um, Kevin from Philly now. Let's see. Kevin from Philadelphia. I'm assuming... I'm assuming that Philly is short for Philadelphia. Yep. How are you? How you doing, Kevin? I'm doing all right. I uh, just want to say I'm a big fan of you, Louie, and uh, I'm African-American. I totally agree with everything you're saying about the, the Elwood or nigga or nigga guys, whatever you want to say. You got a hood chance to say so keep on doing your thing, Louie. All right, man. I, I will continue to say nigger instead of the N-word. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Philly, uh, Kevin, whatever your name is. Thanks, pal. All right. All right. All right. Let's see. Fred from Minnesota. I'm going to... I have to try to be more specific on this show after a few phone calls. But go ahead, Fred. What's up? Hey, Louie. How's it going? I'm all right. to say hi. And That's hey. great, man. That's a big contribution. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Goodbye. See you later. See, this is what I do. I, I ask people to call, and then I shut them down. Alex from Virginia, just hi. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Alex. Hey, man. What's happening? Good. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. How long are you on the radio for tonight? Is this your first time doing this? This is my first time doing this, and I'm doing this for three hours. And you're, you're, it's a solo gig tonight. It's just me sitting in a room with a laptop that has phone numbers, on people's names on it. Dude, I got a lot of respect for you, man, because I love ONA, but they got a lot of support with all the comedians. Mm -hmm. You got a lot of balls to do this yourself, man. It's a lot of time. I know. I have no business doing this. I have zero qualifications. I, I You need... Why well, go ahead? Get on the phone and get some people in there and help you out, man. Get some, uh, you know, Patrice or whoever. Yeah, but see, if they were here, I wouldn't be scared, and it wouldn't be that th there is potential for a huge fucking disaster here. Well, and I that's what I, and, and that's what I'm enjoying. I think it's a good time to take those two Vicodin right about now. <laughs> Both of them. Radio Gold. All right, man. I might have to send out the kid for rum, so we'll see. All right. Thanks, Alex. Okay, Dan from Nebraska. I can't just take calls the whole time, but a couple more. Dan from Nebraska, what's up, motherfucker? Hey. You fucking hey, motherfucker. How are you? Hey, hey you're a funny song, bitch. Uh, big fan of Lucky Louie, and wanted to see what you had planned for the future. Well, as as TV shows. Uh, Lucky Louie's gone. HBO shoved it clear up their asses, and uh, I am not. I'm just a comedian now. I might do another show like Lucky Louie, but somewhere else. That's that's the plan. That's what I'm trying to do. But well, I need... we love it when yeah. uh, we love it when you're on the show and uh, big fan of yours. Thanks, man. All right, Dan. Yeah. From, what are you driving? You're driving around. Where are you? I'm I'm in Nebraska on my way to Portland, Oregon. You so you're on a highway? Yes, sir. Are you a truck driver? Yes, sir. Hey, blow your horn really loud just to bum people out on the road around you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do it again. Like, just keep blowing it. <laughs> uh, everybody's looking back at you going, what? <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. Love you. Bye. All right. I don't care. Phones. I'll do that for a while. Fuck all of you who want me to actually do anything besides talking to people who want to tell me they like my show or that I suck. Uh, what is this? Vinny in Poughkeepsie, New York. Nice spelling on Poughkeepsie. Hey, Vinny. Is Vinny there? Or we got Vinny? No. Hey, Vinny, you, you, are you from Poughkeepsie? Yes. That's a horrible place, isn't it? It's terrible, except for Bananas. Bananas is a fantastic comedy club. Really? Yeah. Really? The basement of a Holiday Inn? Basement of a Holiday Inn. Yeah. Well, the location isn't really fucking up to par. But. No. But hey, you get to see Bobby Collins uh, tell stories about Hawaii, so that's great. This is true. This is true. 
<laughs> what else is up, Vinny? Anything? Nothing. Just hanging out, dude. All right, man. Just keep listening, and I swear to God, this will get so much better. I have this huge thing planned for five minutes from now. No, uh, I don't. No, I don't. No, you don't? No, well, of course you have, not. you have fucked it before. Yeah. When that douchebag asked you how you were doing, or he didn't even ask you how you doing. He said, hey, what's up? And yeah. you went, good, how you doing? Yeah, you see? <laughs> That's he, the... he, didn't, he didn't give a shit how you felt. No, nobody cares. Nah, All I right. do. Yeah, All right, thanks, I'm going to get pulled over now, so. All right, enjoy Poughkeepsie. Bye. All right. <laughs> All right, let me see now. Let me just let me just slow down on the fucking phone calls. <laughs> um, who's it? Play the Jimi Hendrix for a second. Just play that shit. Sure. This is this song called Voodoo Child by Jimi Hendrix, and I used to get so loaded and listen to this loaded like it's the seventies, like I'm Peter Fonda. We're going to get loaded, man. We're going to ride our machines. All right. This, here's the thing about this. This is Jimi Hendrix. And you can hear people hanging out in the background while he's recording a song. Who were the people that were so cool that they were in the studio while Jimi Hendrix was was recording an album? Jimi Hendrix was black, and he had big teeth and a huge afro. And if he were alive today, I would suck both of his dicks. Do you understand... I'm not saying that I even know he had two dicks, but I'm saying I would suck his dick, and then when I was done, if he said, now suck this one, this is my other dick, suck this one too, I'd say, dude, I'm sucking it. Listen to that shit. Who sounds like this now? What little faggoty fucking asshole kids that play music now sound like this? I'm too old. Turn it off. Never fade out. Just turn it off. <laughs> Fading out like you're fucking somebody who would fade out. You mother, you cunt of a mother. All right, Matthew from Montreal. What's up, Matthew? Hey, Louis. Uh, I wanted to say I'm going to be at your show in Montreal when you're in here on the 19th. Oh, good. Yeah, I'm going to be in Montreal at uh, Club Soda. Yeah. On the I'm 19th. On the 19th of July. It's a Thursday at, at midnight. Yeah. And I'm it's, uh, I can't wait. Uh, I love you, think you're great, and say fuck HBO for uh, canning Lu Lucky Lou. That's, That's right. Fuck them. Unless they want to bring it back, in which case, hey, guys, well, I yeah, love HBO. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's going to be a great show. I'm doing an hour of all new material, nothing from Shameless. Everything I did on that special is gone. It's all I can't gone. Wait. So that's going to be a great show. So tell your friends so that I can uh, have people to talk to that night. I already got another bunch of people coming. I was telling them all about it. Check you out on uh, on your website. That's right? awesome, Matthew. Thank you. Hey, by the way, are you one of these Canadians who gets hung up on how we don't know your history? Uh, no, I could give a shit less. Yeah, you know, because since some people in Canada, like, they go, we know all your history, so why don't you know anything about us? First of all, do anything that matters ever. <laughs> Second of all, don't fucking learn our history then. Fuck you. What do I have to know everything about people that know about me? Anyway, it doesn't matter. America is a crime in progress at all times. We should give it to <laughs> black people and the Indians, and we should all fuck our mothers. Thanks, Matthew. No problem. Thanks, Louie. All right. I'm hanging up on Matthew now. All right. No, he's... Oh, I locked him. Like, he's going to be here all night now. Okay, I got it. Don't I get up. What do you think? I'm a... See, this guy is totally helpful, and I just... I just... <laughs> I scream at him. All right, let's see. Wants to talk music. Chris from Purchase College. Purchase. Purchase. Hi. What's up, Chris? Listen, Jimmy Hendrix uh, kept refugees in his fucking bandana. He thought they were mescaline, but they were actually Mexicans. What do you mean? You mean he thought they were Mex mescaline because Mexican sounds like mescaline? Yeah, the guy was always fucked up. But the truth of the matter was, if he didn't have them, he wouldn't have been able to do what he was doing. He strung his guitar backwards because he told someone else to do it. Because he told somebody else to do it? Yeah, he had Mexicans doing the music <laughs> that made him brilliant. But you said he thought they were Mexicans, but they were, it was masculine. Yeah, because he was fucked up because he's a stupid, thick-headed fucking Vietnam veteran. He didn't fight in Vietnam. Yeah, he was a fucking paratrooper. He was a fucking medic. He was a medic? He Why does that medic. part make you so mad? He was, he was a medic. He was a medic. He was airborne. My father was airborne. I know these things. Your father wasn't airborne. 
Yeah, he was. No, he wasn't. Yeah. Your father's a liar. He got drafted in the 50s. Yeah, and he oh. worked in a kitchen in Kansas. No, he jumped out. And he served and fucking he hot dogs to other fucking army faggots that didn't go either. <laughs> no, he was in New Jersey. Now you laughed. I Now I know you're not mad. Fuck you, Chris. Get off the phone. He's gone. Trying to act mad. Saw you at Bananas. What is this guy? Kim. Oh, this guy. A guy named Kim. A woman named Kim. Hi, Kim from North Jersey. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Uh, you know, I don't know. Not so good, but That's it doesn't great. matter. No, um, I do you remember I jumped on you at Bananas? Oh, yeah. You just some... I was at Bananas in Jersey, and after the show, this girl just jumped on me and wrapped her legs around my waist and yelled or something. Why did you do that? Because I was to I'm totally in love with you. I think you're the hottest guy. That's great, and, Kim. But then you shot me down. You told me you were married. Yeah, What? Because so while you were on around my waist, I said, I'm married? What a yeah, fucking married faggot. You told me you were married, and uh, so ugh. when I hung my head down in shame and walked away. Well, so you should have, you little hussy. <laughs> you know I'm married. How dare you? I'm really not a hussy, though. Just I know you're not. Totally you just... Obsessed. Kim, and you're, you're one of my friends on MySpace, too. Oh, really? I don't I, get very much correspondence from see, you. See, I can't talk to you on the air, though, because it, you're just nice, and I can't shit on you. Oh, I don't... You're well, too, I'm really not into that, but... Yeah. You know, it's, Okay. Listen, thanks for jumping on me at Bananas. You're probably the only woman that's touched me in 14 years. <laughs> it's really sad, because I have kind of a nice penis. It's like, it's sort of big, but I might as well rip it off and put it out in an ashtray. Well, you can give it to me if you want. All right, I'll send it to you in a little uh, a little baggie. Thank Bye, you. Bye, Kim. Bye, Louie. I can't talk to a girl that's nice to me on the air. Chris from Indiana. Okay, Chris from Indiana needs parenting help, and uh, you're not on the air yet, so don't start talking to your phone. But um, if anybody wants to talk about being a parent, I'm willing to do that. Uh, fathers and mothers, although fathers need more help... Uh, because it's not our natural state to hang around. We're supposed to fuck a woman and then go fuck another woman. Uh, Chris, Louis. what's your problem with the kid? Oh, man, you know, I just... Uh, I Sorry, go ahead. She, hey, cool. Yeah. Um, you know, three and a half months old, daughter. I've heard you on o a number of times, mm -hmm. you know. I have a four-year-old son. You know, the, the whole thing's completely different between boys and girls. Yes. And I know you got two young girls. Mm -hmm. Um Yes, I do. Five and two years old. Yeah, well, this is completely different. Just, it's like, dude, what's up with it? What's up with daughters? Wait, you know, wait a minute, she's three and a half months old? Yeah. How do you already have a problem with a, a kid who's basically just a blob of shit flesh? Well, that's... Pro that's she's still shitting... Problem. She's still shitting... Shut up for a second. She's still right. shitting black, right? No, 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 no. It's brown now and green and shit like that? Yeah, brown and green. You know, the breast milk whole thing. Right. You know. But how is she? They're already different. <laughs> Three and a half month old. What is she doing that's particularly girl-like that's bothering you? She's fucking high maintenance, dude. I mean, she's completely high maintenance. Doesn't shut up. Doesn't sleep. You know, I work. You know, I, I have a mm -hmm. job. So, yes. you know, I'm going on like three hours worth of sleep every uh -huh. damn day. Sure. You know? Sure. What, 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 you know, and, and my son, trust me, no picnic, okay, when he was young, but certainly much more so than than the daughter. Love her to death. But she's a wrong. she's a ba Why did you have a baby if you wanted to sleep? Um, that's a good point. Yeah, you know, here's the thing. You had a that. baby. You've got a fucking being in your house who has doesn't know how to sleep, doesn't know how to shut the fuck up. What is she gonna shut up? What is a three and a half month old actually gonna think? This guy's working really hard. I gotta give him a break. She's a fucking stupid baby. <laughs> and right she's gonna that, be dude, stupid for a long time. That long, but if she's on the tip that long, you know, give me a half hour. All right? Throw me a bone. Nobody's gonna throw you any bone. You had a, a child. You made cum come out of your dick into your fucking wife. And yeah. a baby happened. Yeah. And now you That's can't fair. sleep. So, no world pearls of wisdom from you there's well. nothing no the, all, this is it man just fucking don't expect it to get better all of a sudden just just uh don't just sleep when you can sleep on the weekends don't hang out with your friends i don't hang out with my friends dude I, okay I, good I, you know what listening to you 
as many times as I've heard you on ONA, mm-hmm. dude, I, I am so like you. I used to play golf and, you know, kind of have a life outside of, you know, marriage life. But mm-hmm. I gave that shit up when my son was born, pretty much, and I got no regrets for it because I have a good time with them. You know, they're a lot of fun. At times, and it, yeah, you know, but here, yes, no, I hear you, man. I'm just being uh, uh, overly harsh with you, but you, uh, you, you, you just have to, you just have to give in to the fact that your life is going to be fucking monstrous for a while, and you know, then it'll get better when she's uh, 15, Dude, uh, and she starts old. blowing Wait, the neighbor. Excuse me, it's going to get better when she's 15. No, I don't know. I only have a five and two year old. I don't know anything. Yeah, well, I know nothing. Why? All I know is two's a hell of a lot worse than one. Yeah. It just it's hard. It's a hard thing to do. The thing that drives me crazy are parents that want results from their kids as if they're a product. Like right. people that hit their kids cuz that quieted them. Like what did you have a fucking kid for? Listen, man, good luck. You sound like a good guy. You you're doing the best you can and it sucks right now. There's nothing anyone can say that's going to make it better. Hey, by the way, I thought of you today because my my daughter finally had a shit that went up her cunt. That's terrific, man. Yeah. And, and God bless America. Right. Exactly. All right, Chris. I hung up on you in the middle of your sentence because it pleases me. Um, what we, some guy wants to talk about Vicodin. What's up, man? AJ. Hey, how's it going, Louis? That's all right. What's what's up with you? Tell me something. I miss Bill Hicks. You miss Bill Hicks? Yeah. He was a funny guy. That makes me sad. But uh, he's well, dead now. You know that that Vicodin you got? If you crush it up and you snort it, it's kind of mm-hmm. like. Uh, Smoking a bunch of joints, except it's completely different. I never tried snorting Vicodin before. I don't like snorting things. Yeah. Yes, I do. <laughs> Why did I just say that? <laughs> I'll try it. Thanks, AJ. All right, man. He waited a long time to say that to me. That really makes me sad. Not really. Uh, okay. Doug in New Jersey. What's up your ass? Louie, love you. Love the show. Thank you, Doug. I was just wondering who you were going to uh, vote for in the 08 election. Oh, fuck, I don't know. I think they're all cunts. Get this red-headed jackass off the radio! I'm not cutting you off. Keep yelling. I'm not cutting you off. Keep yelling. Why did he hang up? That's all he's got. Does he he really... Was that like a... Here's the thing. It's clear this is a total train wreck. Why would anybody (laughs) bother to call to say this guy sucks? I'll give you that this sucks and that I suck. It's but hey, if you're actually calling to tell me that I suck, you're still listening. So fucking go shove a fucking rock up your mother's cunt so that when she's pushing it out, she's finally giving birth to something useful. Okay? And you can hang out with that rock like it's your big brother and get advice from it. You fucking cunt. I'm not even mad. I don't care. Enjoy yourself. All right. Jeff from Nolens. What's up, Louis? What's going on, Jeff? Uh, well, I'm just uh, curious, man. Uh, my daughter's 11. She's mm-hmm. starting to wear those little hot pants with, uh, you know, the lame, like, uh, hot ass and yeah. down on her shorts. And she's starting to develop and stuff. Um, yeah. What do you think about that? God, I don't know, Jeff. My daughter's uh, oldest is only five, so I'm far away from that. Why, where does she get these shorts? Who buys those shorts for her? Well, well, she goes sleep over at friends' house and stuff like that, and you know, she comes home with them. You know, here's the thing, Jeff. Your daughter, 11 years old, what's that, 6th grade? Yeah. Okay, I remember 6th grade. Boys and girls were kissing already, and girls are sexual people after that age. So that just is what it is. All right. And all you can do is hope that she enjoys making out with the boys she makes out with. And that they make her, and that they make her feel good, and that she uses sound judgment and doesn't fuck a horse <laughs> or a fat man with uh, no condom on. Well, I hope so too. That's all you could do. I wonder if I should uh, throw them away or uh, you know talk to her about it. But I gotta, obviously, I gotta make sure she doesn't stay. What about her mom? How did you talk to her mom about it? Oh, well, her mom lets her wear them. Right, but so your mom, you, you, her mom, are you all family living in the same house? You have to ask that now because nobody yeah. ever is. Yeah, so talk to the, your wife and say, what do you think of this shit with the, the hot pants? And she'll have some point of view because she's a woman with a vagina, so, um, you know. I mean, monitor it and cons- it's part, it's a new part of your job as a parent is that your daughter is uh, a chick 
who kisses boys. <laughs> it's the way it is, <laughs> man. Is, uh, and someday she's, she's going, age, you know, the day is going to come when she's going to suck a dick. It's going to come, and you're going to still yeah, need to be her. Yeah, I got to deal with that. <laughs> you're going to still, you're going to have to be a father of a person who blows people. I uh, know. Unfortunately, and, I got to deal with that. But I love you, Louis. Man, all right. you coming down to New Orleans? Uh, I don't know, man. There's no comedy clubs down there, but I will come down there soon. I really want to, so I will. Man, I hope so, man. We, you got to follow him down here, bro. Thanks a lot, Jeff. Take care of yourself. All right, man. Have a good one. Drunk ass fool talking about titties. This is Ron from Philadelphia. What's up, Ron? Yo. What's up, man? Yo. Did you see the hot dog eating contest? No, I don't. I don't know what you're talking about. The hot dog. Nate, this hot dog eating contest. I don't know nothing about that. Yo, Pat from Unaki was in it. I don't care. You don't care. You don't like Pat? I don't know Pat. I have oh, no Pat. idea. Yo, anyway, Louis, you were the shit in New York. You fucking killed. We came all the way from Philly to see you. You were one of the best. You're a fucking king, Louis. Thank you, Ron. <laughs> Take care. Among mortals. Go get drunk again. Take care, man. Good oh, guy. Sorry. I like that guy. He was drunk. There's a guy from Eddie from Delaware, and he does nothing by his name. He just exists. I'm putting him on. Eddie, what's up your ass, my friend? Uh, I just wanted to call for Cat Noise Saturday. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Oh, is it Cat Noise Saturday? Not to my knowledge. No. <laughs> Keep going. Go ahead. More Cat Noise. Why do people hang up when I invite them to stay on? He could have meowed for 14 minutes. I would have had no problem. Okay, uh, Blake from Oklahoma City. Uh, what the fuck do you want, you motherfucker? <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. I want to know what I'm listening for. What, what, what's, what's planned over the next two and a half hours? Um, I'm not going to tell you because uh, what would what would be Give the point? To listen for what? I'm going to listen no matter what. So just okay. do you have anything planned? I listen, man. If I was to tell you what I had planned, that would ruin everything. There's somebody coming in here tonight. That you're not? No, there's not. There's nobody coming in. It's just me doing this nothing's, for the whole time. Nothing's going to blow my mind. Listen, what did I say in the first minute of this show? What did I say my goal was, Danny? Well, it's, been, it's been 26 minutes. I passed the 10-minute mark, and I, uh, I'm just wondering what, what, what else we're going to hear. <laughs> you know, here's, here's the, I'm, having, I'm struggling with this right now because, <laughs> because here's I'm the thing. I'm laughing off no matter what. But. Well, here's the problem, Blake, is that like, I ha I'm trying to find a angle to shit on you from or to say, fuck you, I don't care. But the fact is your, your concern is totally... Uh, well founded <laughs> and you sound like a completely level you sound like me if if I were listening I'd want to call and say could you just give me an idea if this is going to get better because I don't really want to waste my time I want to give you the benefit of the doubt I'm concerned for you because I don't want you to feel bad but I want you also to know people are listening people are laughing but so oh, no, it's bad about nothing going on oh listen this is just the way it's going to go and hopefully it will develop but I have no idea how I really don't I have no plan it's just it's just Solo the whole night. The whole night, three fucking hours. And I'm well, I'm, I'm on a three hour drive right now, and I just started, so well, I will you be know what, in Blake? the car for the entire time. Stay listening because you're giving me a uh, impetus for what, how, I don't even see. I don't even have command of the language. I have no business broadcasting. <laughs> You've given me a goal. I now that I know that you're in Oklahoma City, which is the shit cunt of America. I'm in, no, I'm I'm in Dallas on my way to Oklahoma City. That's even worse. That you're going yes. from Dallas to Oklahoma City. That's Oklahoma like, City, boomer sooner. That's like driving from a fat woman's cunt into her asshole. <laughs> and now that I know that you're doing that and listening, I actually have like uh, uh, motivation to try to make something happen. So keep listening. Brian Regan was in Oklahoma City the other night. I went to see him. Why don't you ever come to Oklahoma City? I, you know what? I spent New Year's Eve in Oklahoma City. Where'd you go? I worked at a place, this is so many years ago, and it was called Joker's Fuck You. I don't know what yeah, it was. No, it's, that's awful. That's awful. Oh, God, it was the worst night of my life. So I have kind of a problem with Oklahoma City. But I will come there. I'm, I'm no. Yes, I mean, I, will, I know 50 people that will have a ticket in five seconds. That's great. I'll make, I'll make $14. <laughs> no, thank well, you, Blake. Those I, 50 people will tell another. Thanks, Blake. I swear I to God, this will dicks. this will get better. You suck a bag of dicks yourself, my friend. Take care. All right, see you. How did you get? Okay, let's see. Matt from Long Island. Go ahead, man. What's up, Matt? Hey, what's going on? Yo, Louie, how did your wife let you out of the house to do this bullshit tonight? <laughs> you know, it's a really actually a good question because I was in upstate New York. That's where our house is now, and uh, uh, and I. W 
I, I said, I got to go down and do the XM show. And she's like, well, what time is it at? And I said, nine. And she said, so what train? I said, I want to take an afternoon train so I have time to get to the city and, you know, have a run. I didn't want to get to the city at 8 p.m. and run here and do the show. And she's like, why not? And I'm like, because it's the fucking national satellite radio show. And I would like two hours to sit in, on a, in a fucking park bench and go, what the fuck am I going to do? That's why this show sucks. Thank you, Matt, because let's blame it on her. She didn't let me come down here fast enough. <laughs> That's bullshit, Matt, because she actually was really cool about it. And she oh, said, really? go down there whenever you want. I took a 1 o'clock train. And you know what I did, Matt, with my time? I bought a fucking iPhone, like a white gay asshole. And I spent all the hours from 2 p.m. until now trying to figure out how to fucking to make my mail work. So that's that's what my wife did. I can't I can't say that it's her fault. All right. Well, I think you're a genius anyway. Even if the show does suck, huh? <laughs> it does, doesn't it? God damn it! Thank you, Matt. All right. Who else here? Okay. Let me stop on the phones for just a minute. Just a minute. Um. See, the, vo the phones are kind of addictive because then my brain doesn't work between calls and I got nothing to say. All right, I'm going to take a call while I look at my fucking thing, okay? Somebody fucking come on. Penis ointment type person. Ryan from Texas, what's your what's up your mother's ass? Uh, yeah, in regards to what you were saying about the pimple on your penis earlier, I was wondering if you use like, a special <laughs> celebrity cream or is it... <laughs> don't, don't make a fake voice. Don't make a fake voice. You're not on Saturday Night Live. You're not a professional fucking person with a fake voice. Okay, Michael from Oklahoma. Jeez, Oklahoma heavy tonight. What's up? I love you. Love the show, man. Thanks, motherfucker. You're, you're doing awesome, man. Just love you. Thanks, but you no, fucking no. motherfucker, you. Hey, seriously, though, man. Yeah. A couple months ago, you were on O&A talking about, you know, how your life changes when you get married, but how it really changes when you have kids. You know, you, you, you're no longer a husband and wife. You just kind of coexist because the kids take up all your time. Mm -hmm. We've been married, me and my wife, we've been married about nine years, mm -hmm. and we were really having some problems, and I made her listen to the replay on that shit. <laughs> and, and, and I'll tell you what, you know, you hit home with that. You don't know how true that was, man. Well, how's it going with you guys now? Uh, we're in the process of getting divorced. Oh, geez, really? <laughs> how many years were you together for? Uh, we, we've been together, we've been married, uh, what, almost eight years we've been together, we've known each other about 12. Wow, man. And Tw stuff. It's just, it, it, you know, it, it, it just didn't work. How but, many kids you know, do you have? One. How old? Uh, nine. Yeah, see, you know, it just happens. 12 years is a long time to spend with anybody. How the yeah, fuck, just, what but, kind but of fucking know, magic is going to make a fucking relationship work beyond that? It's like impossible. But but the thing but the thing was we had grown my life had gone one direction hers had gone another yeah and the only thing that was keeping I mean there was nothing there man that, you know when when we had the kid I mean we used to go off and do all sorts of things you know we're both older I mean I'm up in my fifties my wife's in her late forties mm -hmm. you know we we were able to go and do we had a late kid it yep. just you know. It changed everything. I mean, sure. the whole dramatic, you know, the whole thing of the relationship. You know, kids do that. They kill you, man. You just, you, you got to know what you're getting into. Before so how long did them. how long did you stay together just for the kid, do you think? Uh, well, at least for the last four or five years. Yeah, so, you know, you, 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 you tried. And I don't know, man. It's like nothing you can say to anybody about, like, stay together. You know, Dr. Laura and people like that put pressure on people and say you got to stay together. You know, what the fuck? It, how could you possibly... Every marriage hits that point after kids where you just don't fucking like each other, let alone love. And then what do you, what do you, what do you do? Thanks, Michael. You, good luck, man. I'm going to talk about, uh, yeah. You know, here's the thing, though. For guys, just one thing to keep in mind, because a lot of guys come up to me because uh, of the way I talk about my wife and kids on stage, and they say, my wife is a cunt also. And I say, well, listen, man, just look at yourself. Take a good, hard look at yourself, because all guys got to do this, just like women do. But I'm talking to guys right now because I'm one. But you, you kind of have to go, you know, I think there's nothing more disgusting than a, an American husband. Imagine being married to a fucking smelly, half-fat, not even fat. Like, most guys are, like, just shitty-looking. Like, 
If you're going to marry a fat guy, you want to marry a big, fat motherfucker, like a fucking giant grapefruit of a man. Like, that would just be a fun stunt to be married to a big ball of shit and just say, yeah, I, my husband's Andre the Giant. And other women would be like, dude, that's fucking cool. But most of women are married to just doughy, vaguely fat guys who, and once you're a husband, you don't even try to smell good or look good. Here's what I'm saying. The American husband has declined so much as a person. That's really, that's why I think 9-11 happened. The reason I think that Al-Qaeda invaded us is because they got satellite TV and they saw our TV commercials and they saw these fucking husbands eating a taco inside of another fucking taco and the direct TV guy's hooking it up and he says, I'm giving you all sports channels. And he says, I love you. And the fucking Arabs are watching this going, I'll invade these fat faggots. Who's afraid of those guys? It was better when the American husband used to be some dude smoking a cigarette with nice hair. God damn it. I'm the worst person to ever be on the radio. Somebody else talk. Frank from Athens, Georgia. What's up, man? Oh, hey. Uh, yeah, you really need to get your uh, act together there with the look. Yeah, my kids are assholes. They are? Which, which, what, how old are your kids? They're um, two and four. They're two? Four year olds, all right, but the two year old's an asshole. Yeah, what, is, what kind of asshole ish things? Is it a boy or a girl? It's a girl. Yeah, what does she do? She's just spoiled. She's always want her mom's always buying her shit. Mm hmm. And I'm trying to tell her that, you know, we don't need to be spending money on shit. Mm hmm. Buying her shit. And it's, I think it's because she can't handle, like, you know, dealing with it. I don't know. Yeah, no, I th what that's what a lot of parents do is they just give their kids shit and then they complain that their kids want stuff all the time. Yeah. Like people that give their kids video games and then yell at them, get off the fucking video game. Don't give your kids a fucking video game. Don't let them watch television. Don't, don't give them a million toys and don't feed them sugar. Like you ever been on an airplane and there's a kid on the plane with a fucking video game and a Mountain Dew? Yeah. How, how is he not going to turn away. into? He'll shut the fuck up when he's playing the video. Game. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But that's but then he needs a video game in order to shut the fuck up. I need a video game to shut the fuck up on an airplane. I'll yeah. You. Well, you know, you're a grown up. So well, you... but barely. Yeah, I know. Good luck, Frank. Thanks. All right, Alex Jones. Alex Jones from Austin, Texas. What do you? What? What's your? What the thing? Will you talk? Make your face. Make noise. How's it going? Am I on the air? Uh, no, you're not. I'm just pulling you aside for a second. I want to find out what you want to talk about first. Okay. Uh, uh, I'm in a conspiracy, and uh, I figured since you didn't have nothing else to do on this show, why not talk about conspiracy? Okay, so um, if I put you on the air, what do you what do you want? What are you going to say? What are you uh, going to ask me about? Al aliens in control of the planet. Aliens uh, are in control of the planet. Chemtrails, uh, fluoride in the water. Uh, mm -hmm. All that good stuff. What what about fluoride in the water? What about that? Uh, it's it, it basically it makes you very passive and kind of stupid. The Nazis figured it out. The Nazis figured it out. Yeah. How exactly. to make people passive? I don't know if I can put you on the air. I think it might be a mistake because right. that might upset people. Because pe fluoride is supposed to be good for your teeth, and if people find out that the Nazis put it in the water, they might get upset. Well, all I got to do is go buy a filter. <laughs> you there? I'm here, Alex. Okay, cool. All right, I'm not going to put you on the air, though. You can't be on the radio with that kind of thing. It's just going to upset people, and they're all going to kill themselves. Well, they won't kill themselves. Well, they should. They how should. do you know? you got to be a little more responsible with your ideas. Well, it's worth looking into. What if it's true? you got a good point, man. I'm not going to put you on the air, though, okay? Uh, All right, good night, man. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking moron. Um, flat. Okay, let's see. What do we got here? Uh, okay, what does this guy want? Steve from New York City, what do you want? Hey, Louie. Uh, I'm about 15 blocks away right now. I work in radio. I'm mm -hmm. not doing anything tonight, so if you want a co-host or somebody to find some material for you, I'd be mm. happy to do it. I think that that's very generous of you, but I'd rather shit in a hat and wear it for the rest of my life. Thanks, Steve. Uh, Three-year-old terror. What do I do? Okay. What? What's? Hey, ma hey, guy in New York City. You got a kid, and she's a terror. He? Yeah, her name's Alexandra. She just 
she drives a wedge between me and my wife. I love her to death. She's a great kid, but she just freaks out constantly and screams and so you give in and I just fight with her constantly. What what makes you like what do you give in? Like well, well, give me an example uh, of you giving in. Uh, an example, I'll say, uh, don't do that or I'm gonna take that away. Mm hmm And she'll do it, I'll take it, and then my wife will say, Oh, don't do that, you're torturing her and I'll give it back to her like a chump. Have you ever talked to your wife about this? Yeah, she, you know, she's just stubborn. My wife is thick. But here's the thing. Just try this. And I don't care if this is boring for listeners because this is important for you to know. Take your wife aside later. Don't fucking, like, because I know what happens. She says, I give it to her. And you turn to your wife and say, what the fuck did you do that for? And she says, well, you're torturing the kid. And the kid goes, meh. And then you just leave the room and go drink a beer and sh and shit in your own mouth for the rest of your life, right? Well, basically. So try this, man. Just next time you're sitting with your wife watching fucking Dancing with the Cunts or whatever it is, <laughs> just turn to her and say, can I talk to you for a second? And she'll go, what? And say, don't say what like that. Just listen. Maybe I have something to say. And turn off the TV and say, okay. listen, when I, when I try to discipline the kid or try to bring consequences to her for what she does, please don't undercut me. It's, it, can you see how that's a drag? And your wife's going to argue with you. But, oh, yeah, it's, ha it's happened uh, numerous times. Yeah, but already. don't do it in the heat of the moment. you got to do it at a time where you're not fighting when everything's cool. you got to bring it up in the, out of nowhere when everything's okay and establish a fucking... You know, here's the thing. Being a parent, it's like being at war. And the way that we do it, it's as if we were a platoon in the army that didn't even, like, kneel down and draw some pictures in the sand with a rock and here, you go here and you go there. You know, like if you're a platoon, you're going to take a, a building or something right. full of brown people that you want to, to kill. You, you, <laughs> you have to draw a picture of the building in the sand. And you say, you go here and Johnson, you go here and all that kind of thing, right? Right. Parent, otherwise, it would just be like, let's just go get the building. And then you'd be, sh people are shooting at you and you're going, you fucking idiot, go over there and yelling at each other. That's what parents do. So you need to actually set some time aside and decide when I say stop that or I'll take that away. You've got to fucking back me up. And if she has a better plan, let her come up with it. Right. No, of course. And, and if your kid is declining in behavior instead of getting better, then one of you is fucking wrong. So you got to you got to work that shit out. But never back down. Never, never. Once you tell your daughter this is going to be the consequence, and explain to your kid too, these are consequences. This is what happens when. Don't just say no. You can't have it because I said so. You got to explain to her. I told you not to do that. You're still doing it. This is the consequences that you lose this thing, you little motherfucker. <laughs> okay? All right, Louie. Thanks for the advice. Hey, love you at the o a virus. Thanks, yeah. man. Those are great shows. I enjoy those tremendously. Okay. Why are you passing out? Jer Jared, from Te Jared from Texas, What's what? tell me what's on your mind. Hey, I was just wondering why he passed on Alex Jones. He he sounds a little wacky. Yeah. But once you can hear what he has to say, it starts to make a little sense. Right, but why? So why didn't I put him on the air? Is what you're asking? <laughs> well, I mean, I understand like, why he didn't put him on the air. But, but he like, he, he was on, he was on the air. He was well, on the a air. Bit, but how do you it, think it, you it, heard him? Well, look, of course. Here's the thing. I, I thought the guy might have some interesting theories, but I thought for my own edification it was more entertaining to let him think that he's not on the air, even though he was. It was a cheap joke, oh. and I did it, and it's oh. over. Sorry, I ruined the bit. God you, didn't, damn you didn't ruin anything, Jared. You're a better man than I am. God bless you. Uh, oh, oh, right. Louie. Yeah, what? Uh, are you ever going to come down to the Austin area with any of your fellow comedian friends? Yeah, I might come to Austin. I, I, we're looking for a theater right now. I don't know which one I'm going to do yet. But I'm going to come All to Austin right. probably early next year. Oh, and if you do come down, yes. I will get you some very, 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 very excellent marijuana. Okay. I'll take that and I'll cram it right up my ass. Thank Why you, Jared. Why would you do that? <laughs> I don't know, Jared. I'm, take, but, it back to, take it back to New York or what? No, uh, no, I would never. I don't smoke pot anymore. I just oh. don't. I can't do it. I get paranoid. I get upset. I'm going to tell a story about that. I'm going to take you, take you off the air, okay? But just listen to this shit. Um, All right. I, I was... Uh, Last time I got high was in Kansas City, and uh, I was working at a comedy club. And you know, a lot of comedy clubs they close the door after the show, and the 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 staff gets high. So sometimes I'm on the road and I'm bored, and I'll smoke a joint. But I get so fucking high now that I can't handle it. And I was in my car, um, just sitting at a 
I remember I was at a McDonald's drive through eating my food at the window and listening to the radio. Like, I just remember that moment that I'm eating the burger and listening to the radio, and I look over to my left, and the lady's looking at me like, why are you still fucking here? That's how high I was. I'm a very bad person. Uh, Gator from Gator from North Carolina. Oh, shit. And you just gave my wife ammunition, you cocksucker. You see? <laughs> you cocksucker. I mean, it's sad enough I go home a week ago and she's watching Oprah, mm -hmm. the fucking doctor on there, telling her, for every 30 pounds you lose, you find three inches. For every 30 <laughs> pounds you lose what? Every 30 pounds you lose, you got to find three inches of cock. So I've gained about 200 pounds since we're married. Uh-huh. So I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> Listen, Gator, Gator, I can't, I can't keep you on the air because your phone sucks. But uh, listen, I'm, 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 I'm making fun of husbands who are vaguely fat. I'm saying cross over that line. If you're married and you're getting vaguely fat and just shapeless, fucking push past that to being a big fat man with a round belly who's going to die in any second. That's the thing that's exciting about being married to a big fat man is that there's this tension in the air that he might fucking blow a shit in his pants and die of a, a die of a heart attack. How is that not fun? Katie Katie from New York, what's up? Hey, Louie. Um, my boyfriend and I watched, um, I think it was, was it HBO? Was it One Night Stand? We watched your show on HBO the other mm -hmm. night. Yes. It was. And, I think uh, it was Shameless, my hour special, which is available yeah. on DVD, by the way, for all you folks that want to let me have some money. Go ahead. Yeah, we really liked it. We were laughing our asses off. Thank you. But uh, we were wondering, because you said kind of some mean things about your four-year-old daughter, which was really funny. Yeah. But, like, what are you going to do when she's like, Daddy, what do you do? Can I watch? I don't know. You know, it's a good question. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do because uh, those are real kids, yeah, and I um, <laughs> and they you exist in the world. I think I'm going to have a long talk with her one day and then show her everything. That's what my That's plan is. Idea. That's you what I'm going to do. Her that you have another kid that you were talking. About. That's what I should say is that she has a sister who died. Um, she was an asshole. Because she was an asshole. And she fucking gave the guy a guy the finger, um, and he hit her with a truck. And moral of the story: don't ever give some stranger the finger. Yeah, exactly. You know, here's the thing, though, Katie. This shit puts a roof over her head, so she can fucking go fuck herself. Thank you, Katie. God bless no you. No problem. All right, somebody that's been on for too long uh, on hold. Rob from Long Island. Is that me, Rob? Yeah, that's you, Rob. What's up, Louie? How you doing, buddy? Good, man. How are you? Listen, listen. Love the show, Lucky Louie. Awesome. I love Jim Norton, O and A. Yeah, me too. Um, bringing up kids. Um, I'm trying to teach my my daughter to be a lesbian. You trying to teach her how to be a lesbian? Yeah, because I don't want any guys just fucking stabbing her in the cunt with a fucking cock, and then you know all of a sudden uh, he's an owner, you know. Or... You don't want any guys stabbing her in the cunt with their cocks. Exactly. What but don't. Wouldn't you like them? Wouldn't you like a fella to make love to your daughter and make well, her happy? How often does that happen, buddy? <laughs> I don't know. I mean... I mean, it's going to be sincere with some guy who's not going to just divorce her in a couple of years and, you know... You're and, looking too far ahead. At some point, someone's going to fuck her and she's going to like it. Not every that. guy, not every... Like, when, how old is your daughter? I'm 37. My daughter is 13. Your daughter's 13. Look, at least a few guys are going to feel her up. It's going to be exciting for her. Someone's going to fuck... Not every kid that's fucking her is going to divorce her when she's, you know, 38. Yeah, but the one that's going to try to, you know, marry her and whatnot, and I'm sure it's going to end up in divorce, and then she's going to get screwed or whatever, or, you know... Yeah, but well, so what's wrong with that? Seriously. Oh, that, I don't know. Pressure on me. What do you want from... So, because you think she's going to move back home with you? Yeah, exactly. That's... Yeah. <laughs> I got a boy who I don't really, you know, he right. can do what he wants. He can go out and just... So how are you going to teach your daughter to be a lesbian? How are you going to go about doing that? Um, well, she's already a racist, so... Uh, she's already a racist? Yeah, she's already a racist. My father and my father-in-law... Right. You know, just don't, don't like like black people, and so... You don't like what? They don't like black people. My father and my father-in-law taught her to dislike black people. Do you not like black people? I, of course I like black people. I don't give a shit. All of them? You know? All of them? What about yeah, the bad ones? Them, yeah. 
<laughs> no, so your your father and your brother in law, did you just say? My father and my father in law have taught your daughter to not like black people. Not like black people. How did yes. they skip you to her to tell her not to like black people? Because <laughs> I'm very quiet and I'm very shy and then uh I don't really push those issues on my kids, you the, know. But this is exactly the thing, Rob. Is this is the answer to all your questions? How are you? What? How? What's going to happen to your daughter when when she gets heartbroken? And how is your daughter going to grow up a racist? The answer to both of them is you. You have to be a real fucking father. She, oh, I am a real father. I know I, you I are. Real, I am a real father because my wife is a fucking cunt, and okay. my kids hate her. Uh -huh. They love me. They avoid her. Uh -huh. and they glue themselves to me. Okay, but you're letting your daughter grow up a racist, and you're trying to teach her to be a lesbian because you're terrified a guy might stab her in the cunt with a <laughs> with a cock. <laughs> All right, just because your daughters, you know why? You know, like your daughters love you because you're quiet and you're giving and you're a sweet guy. But yeah, you got to be greatest guy in the world. right. But you got to start being tough and teaching your daughter that you, that your father's a fucking asshole and that your father-in-law is a fucking asshole and that you're <laughs> smarter than you got to stick up for your daughters. Stick up for your kids, man. Good luck to you. Take it easy. No doubt. All right, I'm getting too serious, right? There's only two people on the phone now. That's how bad I am at this. <laughs> Let's just clear out this shit. John from Appen. Where are you from? I can't read it on the thing. You said John? Yes, you, John. What's up? Uh, yeah, from Aspen. Anyway, uh, first of all, thank you for saying that stuff about the N-word. That always mm -hmm. bugs the shit out of me. They're niggers, whatever. Uh, I have a 14-year-old daughter... The point of the N-word thing was not that they're niggers. The point is, if you're saying N-word, you're saying nigger. So just fucking fess up to That's it. That's what I meant. That's what I meant. All right, go ahead. Um, all right, uh, two weeks ago, I caught my 14-year-old daughter with her boyfriend on my bed, um, obviously, mm -hmm. um, having intercourse. What? How would you have dealt with that? She's 14. She's, how would you have dealt with a guy, and how would you have dealt with your daughter? Well, let me ask you... No, your daughters are young, but, I mean, what would your... Well, look, I, I don't know, because I'm not there yet, but let me ask you this. Uh, you said, obviously, they're having intercourse. Are you sure? How do you know that? Because they were naked on the bed, and his dick was inside of her. Okay. <laughs> I thought maybe you walked in, and they were half naked, and you assumed. No, it was, um, there was no guessing about it. Is they, he her boyfriend? Are they close? Have they been together a long time? They've been together for maybe uh, maybe a year. You know, I don't know, man. I mean, she's fucking fourteen. I mean, I, yeah. I I didn't have sex till seventeen, eighteen at least. And how old is he? Almost the same age. How old, how old is, is he? he? Yeah, uh, fifteen, I think. You know, I guess I would have closed the door and said, "Go put your clothes on and come out here." I mean, the only That's thing, is, nothing, nothing like yelling and screaming and showing rage and uh, cutting his dick off and eating it. Uh, none of those things help. Uh, sh you know, uh, hitting her in the head with a pipe and then uh, uh, hanging yourself uh, with a weight machine. None of those things help. Uh, what, what do you say in the talk when you sit down with her? Do you say... I mean, I think you, you ask them, what are you guys doing and how? Did you, what do you think of what you're doing? You know, you could get pregnant. Are you using a condom? Were they using a condom? Yeah, they were. All right, well, you know... It's that, that somehow made me happy, but... You know how serious this is? Yeah, it should make you happy. You want to ask them, you know how what this means that you did this? Uh, you know, do you, this is big deal. It's grown up stuff. I think maybe you call the kid's parents and tell his parents. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, it, I, I've, yeah. You got to face it. You just got to deal with it and face it. I don't know, man, though. You got to call an audible on a situation my wife, like that. My wife just freaked the fuck out and didn't know what to do, and I was trying to calm her down and tell her what we should do, and I don't really have much of a clue. No, you don't, but at least you're wondering what to do. If you just if you just react with your own personal emotions, you're failing your kid, I think. Yeah, I think you got to try something. Try to, you know, not just be upset and make her think that fucking is, is bad for daddy and mommy. <laughs> That's like the last thing that she needs. <laughs> Good luck, uh, man. This is turning into a kid, uh, uh, how to have kids show. That's all right. I don't care. Let's give it a shot. We're going to have a break right now, uh, whatever that means. I don't know what happens during the break, but I'll be back. And if anybody's still listening, I'm going I'm to keep doing this. Uh, I'll try to talk without calls a little bit if I can think of something to say. Um, everybody out there, I fucked all your mothers. Thank you for listening. I'm coming back in a minute or two. This is Louis C.K. on the ONA Virus uh, program show channel XM. Hey, this is Louis C.K. It's Louis C.K. Louis C.K. Okay, here comes.
comes the good part. Ready? Wouldn't you like to listen to this the whole time? I mean, me going doo 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 doo. All right, turn it down. He's still fading the fucking song. Oh, AIDS. AIDS into your eyes. All right, folks, here's the deal. I took one of the Vicodin. <laughs> and I'm already pretty sure that it was a mistake. Because that shit works fast. Let's just see how this goes. Maybe it'll slow down my heart rate a little. I think I'm talking too fast. I smoked a Lucky Strike cigarette. Mighty fine tobacco. No filters. I buy my Lucky Strike cigarettes now and again. <clears throat> Excuse me. Not really. At this deli down the street from me. And I go in there at least twice a week and I say give me lucky strikes and the guy says we only have the no filter and I'm like that's what I fucking want I was here a few days ago why are you warning people that lucky strikes doesn't have filters boy isn't that interesting all right let me just say something about kids and the sexuality for a second I was reading something about sex ed sex education in schools we were all taught sex in schools. And the weird thing is that the way they measure how good a sex ed program is, is by finding out how few kids are having sex. In other words, the point of sexual education is to get kids not to fuck. And that's just the wrong way to approach it. Because the boys have boners. And you got to explain to them why they have a boner and what to do about it. They can't just ignore it because they will get a gun and shoot their fucking classmates. I swear to God, that's why every school shooting happens. You got to help kids that are... You know, you start getting boners when you're nine years old. And you don't come until you're like 12. So it's three years of unsatisfied, rock-hard, little tiny penises. That's the boys' problem. The girls' problems are that they're surrounded by boys with boners. Other than that, I think they're probably doing okay. And they're getting periods, which I'd rather shoot myself. Bill from Texas. What's up, Bill? Hey, hey Louie. Yeah, Good hey, man. Show, man. Thanks, Listen, man. I think I should have been more like my parents. When I turned 18, I wanted to get the hell out. Right. I got this I got this great kid. She's she's works part-time. She's going to college, wants to be a teacher straight A's, and I can't get her to leave. She went away to college, six miles away. She moved out of the dorm after one semester and back to the house. How do I get rid of her? You want it, you want her gone, right? Because you want your life back. Yeah, it'd be kind of nice. It's been a long time. You've been a parent. Years. You've been a parent for how long now? Twenty years. Give, really. You know, yeah. I think. Look, this person is a grown up. Yeah, she I, is. She's a. She's great, but she just. No, what I'm saying though is because she's a grown up. I think you have a right to sit her down and say, "Dude, I love you. Get the fuck out of my house." I'm yeah, a, but that's where that. That's where the other half gets involved. It's her last one. It's the youngest. And yeah, I know, but but want to kick her out of the nest, I know, know that, but you are an individual. If you look, it's been twenty <laughs> fucking years. Let me let me give you like an analogy that doesn't quite work. Okay, yeah, I've, I've been doing stand up comedy for twenty two years. Okay, that's how fucked up my life is. Twenty two <laughs> years I've been doing stand up comedy, and I did the same shitty act for the first fifteen years, I think. And at one point, I thought, why don't I do new jokes? Because I'm afraid they won't get laughs. And then I said to myself, fat, redheaded cunt, you've been doing this for 15 years. What's wrong with one audience thinking that you suck? Just go up there and bomb with new jokes, you fucking faggot. What I'm saying is you've been for 20 years listening to your wife and letting her tell you what to say to your daughter, right? If you've earned anything, it's the right to sit your daughter down without telling the mother about it. Take your daughter for a beer, shit, and say to her, listen, this is between you and me and... She'll feel fucking special that you told her this. Say, I'm a guy. You know guys. You fucked a couple of guys, probably. Listen, I need my life back. I don't want a girl living in my house anymore. If you leave for two years, next time I see you, I will cry my balls off. <laughs> All right, Louis, Get her the fuck out of the house. Good luck, man. What is it? This is this guy says, used to hate Louis. Uh, Corbett from Georgia? Yeah, that's me. Go ahead, man. You, you used to hate me? 
Well, I hated you up until tonight. I'm starting to dig on you now a little well, bit, man. When did you hate me? What made? What did I do? I love that there is a person in the world who I never heard of who hates me. Tell well, me, you, know, you know, it wasn't that, that really that personal that I hated you. Yeah. I just kind of felt like your the whole it was just a gimmick to deal with your wife or anything because yeah. you know I've, I'm cooped up with my wife 24 seven. We got a pretty decent relationship, so mm -hmm. I thought everything was a gimmick. But I've heard you tonight talking and. Um, I don't know. You've been really honest tonight. I, I like the fact that you came on the radio right away and said, hey, this is, you know, probably going to suck and you won't like the first <laughs> 10 minutes. And, of course, I, you know, I'm, I'm stuck glued to the radio, of course, from that point on. But uh, well, I just liked your honesty and everything. And uh, I've listened to you on O&A before and I found myself on opposite sides of the uh, uh, of differing opinion from, from what you have. And, and uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm really starting to like it, though. Oh, thanks, man. Well, keep listening. Enjoy the show, man. All right. Take well, it easy. Stay honest, man. Okay. I won't say anything I don't mean tonight, or, or, or I'm just not gonna. It's not worth it anymore. So I will try to be honest. Donna's been on hold for 15 minutes. Poor woman from Georgia, 13 year old daughter. What's up, Donna? Not much. That's great news. <laughs> Go ahead and talk. Tell me something. My 13 year old daughter. <laughs> your, your 13 year old daughter. That's it. She she waited on. She just hung up. She was on hold for fifteen minutes. Donna, if you're listening, just call back because you sounded interesting. You sounded unlike people that I know in the world. For some reason, twenty four minutes. Jessica from Long Island's been on hold. What's up, Hello? Jessica? Hey, what's up? Hi. We're actually calling to tell you that we think you're really funny. Me and my husband are in the car right now. Oh, great! Thanks, guys. I know we, no, we loved your show and mm -hmm. we love your comedy because we could totally relate to it. Because we pretty much have to take like four or five in a day to get through our day with our two-year-old son. Yeah, now be careful with that shit because it's highly addictive. <laughs> I, that's if why it I. Is, I'm not really sure if it is though. I can't tell. Yeah. So you yeah, have a how, how how old is your kid? He's two. He's two, and you guys are in a car by yourselves. Yeah, my mom's watching him. See, that's awesome. That's why you're gonna you're gonna be all right because you're spending <laughs> some time together. Where are you guys going? We just got back from Peter Luger's. We're going home right now. So you went to Peter Luger's, you had a steak? Yeah, steak, some wine. Some wine, yeah, uh, just home. the two of you? Yes, isn't that great? That's awesome. And see, other people are looking at you in your booth, and they're saying, look at that, that's a married couple by themselves. What the fuck could they possibly have to talk about? I know, right? But, but there you, know, you are. You don't get to do it that much, but you just can't talk about this thing, can't talk about our son. Can't do it. That's great, man. I, that's great. Are you going to have sex with your husband tonight? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> he's going to have sex with you tonight. <laughs> when, you, when you get home... <laughs> he said no shot. No, I said maybe. <laughs> no shot? Why? Does he have red wine and steak dick? Is he no, not going to make it? No, he said no shot. I don't know why he said no shot. I don't know why he said that. No shot. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? Now it makes me want to not have, have sex with him. You really... Listen, you should fucking rape your husband tonight. No, I, I will, I will. You should <laughs> rape him. <laughs> Just fucking sit on his limp dick and smash it into your pussy. I'm so, I'm so that's that's now. real man rape. If he's hard, it's not rape. That's what the important thing here. You need to just bash your pussy into his fucking. Okay, I'm really embarrassed right now. I can't do that. Embarrassed? The fuck? <laughs> just do it. Just mush right, it against yeah. his ball. Rape his balls. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Exactly right. that. Rape his balls. Okay. All right, Jessica. Good luck with that. All right. Come that's what I think really women should do if they don't like their husbands is rape them. Don't fuck him. If he gets hard, it's over. Just get it. Go away. But get just fucking blow his limp dick. Does that mean anything? No. Why am I? What am I talking about? All right. Josh from New Mexico. What happened to you? Hey. Tell me your story, How's man. How's it going, Louie? You know, I have no idea. I'm a big fan. Thank you. Hey, I uh, took a Vicodin. I'm starting to feel it. Okay. I, I talked to Patrice about the situation. It was mm -hmm. a little different. Did you hear how he but... dismissed that? I said I took a Viking and he goes, yeah, okay. Listen, I talked to Patrice. <laughs> Go ahead, Josh. What's up? You talked to Patrice okay. about this. What happened? Yeah, it, it's evolved since then. Back then, she just got pregnant. But right now, uh, we're moving in. Um, should I marry her just because we're having a kid together? Uh, why get What would be the point of marrying her? It's just old, old rules, I guess. Who, who want? Does she want to get married? She wants to get married. Her family wants us to get married. F fuck to I the mean, family. I, fuck the family. They're not living in your house with the fucking shitty kid and the two of you yelling at each other. 
Fuck yeah, everybody that. else but the two of you and this fucking awful thing that's going to come out of her vagina. Just, so should I feel bad whenever she says, you have to marry me? Yeah, because... Uh, and I tell her no? Well, how do you feel about her? Do you like her? Do you love her? Yeah, I love her, but I'm not ready for a marriage. But you're going to have a kid and live together. <laughs> so Yeah, well, I hear what's going on with your, you know, whole, you know... It's just a miserable. So you want an egg? You want to be able to exit? You want a way out? I don't really want a way out. I want to be in the child's life and everything. Right, and you want to be with her because you love her on some level, right? Yeah. But you don't. So what is it about getting married that is like a block for you? That's stopping you? I guess it's just the other pussy that I wish I could get. Ah, the other pussy. How old are you, man? I'm 25. 25. There's so much pussy. That you're gonna, if you don't marry this woman, you, next week you're gonna fuck Jessica Simpson. I swear to God, oh, yeah. you're gonna fuck oh, every yeah. woman on the earth. No, really. Um, y here's the thing I would say, and I am at the shit end of a long road of a tough marriage and kids, which means just like any other marriage and kids. All right, there's nothing special about me. The one thing I could tell you is that you have to be totally honest. No matter the thing that you're really fucking afraid to say. Married people are always two people in a room, and both of them have something they really wish they could say, and they will die not saying it, and it will ruin their lives. So what you need to do is say to your girlfriend the fucking following list, which makes you not a monster but a human being. A, you are ex excited to be in your... You want to be a father to this kid. B, you love her and you want to be with her right now. C, you're only 25. You're fucking young. And you still want to fuck other people. Oh, yeah. She has to know that. And if if finding out that you want to fuck other women makes her want to go away from you, it's she's that's the reality. You want to fuck other people. You still want to. Yeah, but that goes up against the whole relationship part, doesn't it? Not if it's the way you. Other people. Not if it's the way you feel. It maybe doesn't mean you have to fuck other people, but. Maybe all that means is that just don't make me marry you right now. Or is well, it, I'm, you know? I'm going to get her a five-year subscription to Bride Magazine, so. Yeah. Is that a car crash? One thing I would say, though, no, I, it's, I don't care. I don't, I, I'm not going to judge you. You think I'm doing anything? <laughs> if, I, <laughs> if I was killing on this show, I would do the car crash, even though I don't have that button. <laughs> uh, but I can't judge a single person for making a shitty joke on this show right now. Um I, look, man, just fucking tell her how you feel. Just tell her. D tell her. Don't even. Don't. You don't have to say I want to fuck other women. Just say hey, I'm really having a hard time marrying you, and don't don't bullshit her about it. And fuck her mom and her dad and all those people and your mom. Fuck all those people. It's yeah. easy for them to fucking push you into some shit that they, that they push themselves into. Fucking idiots. Yeah, Louis C.K. Shameless. Good luck, Josh. Yeah. He's gone. Let's see. <laughs> Yeah, man. There's really not a great answer to a lot of these questions. I mean, it's like raising a kid. We we live longer than we're supposed to already. Romeo and Juliet were 12 years old, by the way. <laughs> like, you're supposed to marry in your teens and have kids and then die of diphtheria or some other fucking yellow skin disease when you're like 30. So, we're look, man, it's tough. John from John from Cleveland, what's up, man? Hey, Louie, love you, love your show. Thanks, John. What's up? Um, listen, I just got married about five months ago, and I've been listening to these guys calling, and you jib-jabbing, and I'm like, I'm expecting my first kid, and quite frankly, you scared the fuck out of me now. <laughs> well, how's it going? Are you happy? Uh, yeah, it's only been <laughs> five months. Right, so, look, man, just... What do you, what did you, what do you expect? Here's the thing, what do you expect it to be just great all the time? It's going to be really hard. But the other the other flip side of it is you could die in a room by yourself with a nurse wiping your ass if you're lucky and you got the health care. God, I hope so. So, you know, at least you got somebody. Uh, I rode the train with my wife the other day. I fucking hate being on a train. Hate it. And my wife and I are having a hard time right now, but she was sitting next to me and I had somebody there with me. So it's worth it. I but, think, I, but the fucking you talk about these kids being miserable, and I'm like, I, I'm not Bob. I'm ready to grab a coat hanger now. <laughs> John, it's gonna be fine, man. You're gonna have kids, and you're gonna. Here's the thing: on paper, having kids sucks. You can't sleep. You have to touch shit with your hands. You have to fucking um, argue with someone who is is completely unreasonable 
that's your wife and your kid. Right. Uh, and you and you and there's no end in sight until either the kid or you dies. So on paper it sucks, but what drives you is that it's your kid, and it's it having a kid is f- amazing. It's great. I hope you're right, man. Thank you. Good luck. Whatever. How bad is this show so far? I don't. I, you know, I'm enjoying it, folks. So if you're not, you know, you know what to do. Sharon, Sharon, I don't know where you're from, but t- say Franklin something. Franklin Square. What? I'm from Franklin Square, Long Island. All right. Well, go ahead and say some words with your face. <laughs> well, first of all, you're on Vicodin, correct? Yeah, I took one. <laughs> 750 <laughs> milligrams. What did you take one for? Uh, because I'm stressed out and. You know what the thing is? I okay. t- I took a couple the other night because I couldn't sleep and I needed to sleep really bad. Oh, that'll do the job. So I took two Vicodin and it felt amazingly good. And so when I left the house tonight to come and do this show, I stuck two <laughs> Vicodin in my bag, saying, "Look, man, just take good one." Good for if- you. And I took it. I'm telling you, I broke my foot on the Fourth of July, mm-hmm. and I am as high as a kite on hydrocoding, pal. Sweet. Good en- shit. Good en- shit. Enjoy that <laughs> shit, Sharon. Anyway, so the reason why I called was, yeah. um, my boyfriend is a big fan of you, and mm-hmm. I had never heard of you or had seen any of your acts or heard any of your material until um, the Jones Beach show for the Opie and Anthony Virus Tour. Yeah, that was and fun. we had, what were we, uh, fourth row. Mm-hmm. Dude, killed. Oh, I thanks, Sharon. a forever huge fan. Thank you very much. You're line with your daughter, like... Oh, she's a C U N T, and you're like, what? Have you ever hung out with her? Now, why did you just spell cunt instead of saying it? That's what I want to know. I don't know. I'm just like, like you didn't even say you didn't even say C word. You just went ahead and spelled out cunt. <laughs> how did that save you? I say it. I how, don't know. How did Jesus look the other way because you spelt it? <laughs> just say. I think if you, he probably held his ears on that one. If you mean cunt, just say cunt. Listen, if <laughs> if Jesus didn't make mean us to say cunt, he wouldn't have invented cunts. No, good point, good point. Thank okay, you, Sharon. So I can say cunt, 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 cunt. B- fucking until your lips bleed. Enjoy it. Take care, Sharon. <laughs> Bye. You- See, I can't keep people on that are just telling me that they like me, because who wants to hear that? Like, if I'm listening to the radio and there's somebody talking to somebody and they're enjoying themselves, I want to fucking die. Okay. Um. Ray? Hi, Ray. Hello, Ray. Ray from North Carolina. Are you there? I think he has me on the other line. And then he hung up. Donna. Donna. Donna! Hello? Donna, you're on the air, you motherfucker. What's up? My 13-year-old is having sex. Your 13-year-old is having sex? Three niggers. What? With three niggers. With three niggers, you say? Yeah. Why do you call them that? Because they are. What do you what, what What makes you say What makes you call a person something like that? It's different. Niggers are bad. Black people are good. Uh, you know, Donna, you're boring, and your fucking vagina smells like four onions and a potato. Okay. Um, how do I make my baby quiet, Bobby? What's up, Ben? What's going on, Louis C.K.? Oh, not much. Tell me, what, what what do you want to talk about? All right, here's the thing. I have a 16-month-old baby. Mm-hmm. Put him to bed. Me and my wife want to start fucking. Mm-hmm. I'm about to come. All of a sudden, he wakes up crying. Holy How shit. Holy shit. How did that happen? That's what I want to know. He's in his room. I'm in our room. Two totally different ends of the, be- of the house. Yeah. But yet, he wakes up crying. Holy, holy potatoes. How did that happen? What, is he a baby or something? He's 16 months. Bobby, you, that's the way it goes, man. It's just going to be like that. So what? you're going to tell me I'm going to have blue balls for the rest of my life. No. Uh, how, what time did you put him to sleep? What time did that happen? We put him to bed at about nine, eight, nine o'clock. Does he, uh, does he take a nap ever? Yeah, he takes... Hey. But you're, you go to... Do you work while he's taking a nap, or are you ever home when he's taking a nap? No, I, I'm working. So is my wife. Oh, well, I see. That's fucking hard. It's, this is this is what you signed up for when you had this kid. It's really hard. You're any time you have free, you really want to sleep, right? Half the time, yeah. you finally get your dick in your wife, and your kid starts screaming. 
This kid gives no shit about nobody but himself. Even if your kid knew that you were fucking your wife and how important that was to you, he wouldn't care. That's how fucked up it is to have a kid. I remember one time, Bobby, that I was really sick, and my daughter came up and said, take me outside so I can pick blackberries, she says. And I said, I'm really sick, honey. Like, it would hurt me so bad to go outside. And you know what she said? Take me outside so I can pick blackberries. They don't fucking care. The kid only wants the thing that he wants. But that's your new job. Fuck her faster. That's all I can say. You have to learn how to come when you hear the sound of your kid crying, which is, sounds fucked up. <laughs> but if you want to come, that's what you got to do. When your wife says, I'm g g getting up, fucking hold her down and get the jizz out. Not and a problem. Then let the kid cry for a while, by the way. Let him we cry. Do. We do. Good. But after a while, it gets too annoying. Right. Well, you look, he's he's scared. Imagine being only on the earth for fucking a year and two months, and you wake up, you're in a dark room, you don't know where your parents are, and you start screaming, and one of them comes up with a, a, a belly full of jizz and says, shut up. It's tough. It's <laughs> tough for everybody in the whole family. But there's nothing I can do to make it easier for you, except for that it does... How old is this your first kid? Yes, it is. It totally gets easier. They start sleeping longer. It gets... It just does it just gets easier you're gonna turn right. a corner and it's gonna be and you're gonna start fucking your wife again i look man i'm impressed your guys are fucking with a 16 month old kid i'm impressed that you want to and that your wife wants to and that you're getting it done you're way ahead of the game so good luck man he's gone who else needs dating advice what the fuck would i know about dating tony from arkansas what's up man what's up louis what's man yeah. I'm 29 years old, mm -hmm. pretty good-looking guy. Yeah, it um, says you. Uh -huh. Living in a college town. Yes. Uh, I fuck these, like, average skanks whenever I just kind of meet up with them through mutual friends or whatever, mm -hmm. but whenever I'm at the, like, the coolest bars and stuff and I'm, there's, like, eight and a half, nines walking around, ass everywhere, I just can't talk to them. What, how can I get over the hump? I know you're a shapeless, out of shape faggot, but... Yep. And I don't, uh, I don't, you know, I never was good at that, but uh, I don't know. There's something about the fact that you look at the women that you fuck as skanks, and then there's these women that you are, they are beyond your reach for you. There's something weird about that. It's all in your head, you know. Like, if you yeah. just thought of yourself differently, you'd be able to go up to one of those women and say, listen, uh, I got 10 minutes to fuck you, come out to my car, and she'd fuck you. But, uh,. What is what is it about eight and a half and nines? Why do guys feel like they gotta fuck women with rock hard asses? Do you enjoy the skanks, quote unquote, that you fuck? Is that enjoyable? Yeah, but it's not something that I would want to take around with me. You know, I'm a, like a girlfriend type. So you want a girl you can kind of show off and stuff? Yeah. Try, but they don't have to be a nine. But I'm just saying that's just an example of like what, what how can I get. Where do you go? In that? You're going to bars in Arkansas and trying to meet women, right? Yeah. Go to the library and find a girl and start talking to her. If you're at a bar, you know, imagine this for a second. Try to put yourself in the in the in the shoes of a of a nine and a half or eight or whatever you call these women. Like, imagine being a hot girl at a bar. How fucking weird is she? Like, what is her life? She puts on some like sexy clothes she works out to keep her body fit and then she like hangs around a bar and hopes some guy will talk to her <laughs> I mean what kind of a fucked up weird existence is that shit I mean what do you what do you do what's your what What do you do you, you work yeah what is your job uh, I own a uh, landscape company yeah so you own a company you are an owner of a company right you are a guy with a, an identity you're looking at women that, like, she's some fucking woman, a, a hot chick at a bar. Who the fuck would want to be that? Who would want to talk to that? You know what you should do is find a woman that owns a company like you, and you guys uh, will fucking connect like a motherfucker. Like, go find... Okay, well, say there it's are, a library. Find say it's a library. It doesn't have to be at a bar. Say it's a library. I'm just... I'm a faggot when it comes to just coming up to girls. I'm well, that's because you know, again, you're talking. You don't. What would you have in common with some chick at a bar that hopes some guy will maybe uh, fuck her, take her around in her, her around in his uh, uh, Camaro, or whatever people are driving now. I'm too old. Yeah. 
Just why? What would you have to say to that girl? Hey, you're hot. Can I? Can you want to suck my? Like, what would you have to say? She's no. I mean, don't put her on a pedestal. Fucking some chick at a bar with a hot ass. What is interesting about that? But if you found a girl who looks pretty damn good, who does something like what you do, who's like a person with an identity, who has like a company or whatever, and then you guys would just start fucking talking, and that would be so exciting that you'd want to suck her pussy and vice versa. Right. All right, man. Good luck. All right, man. What do I know about getting laid? Jesus Christ, I can't even fuck my own wife. I can't even... I tried to... Fu- Patrice O'Neill said to me the other night, have you ever tried threesomes? This is the kind of advice I get from fucking single people who think they're going to fix my marriage. Patrice says, why don't you introduce your wife into the idea of having a threesome? Like, we ha- we don't even have twosomes. Okay? I'm having trouble talking my hand into jerking me off right now. And I'm telling a guy how to talk to women in a bar. Joe from Las Vegas. What's up, man? Hey, what's up, Louie? Not much. All right. Well, I got a little uh, ordeal. I just tapped into the show. I just got done doing a little bit of work on the side, mm-hmm. and I'm um, hearing you giving out some advice about marriage here. That's right. Here's the deal. I, I've been engaged for five years next month. Jesus I'm not Christ. sure. Well, because <laughs> I don't want to do it. Everybody I talk to is, well, don't get married. Don't get married. Here's you. You got, you know, you yeah. got her laying in the bed, doesn't want to look down your pants. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I, I can get plenty up on the side. I can mm-hmm. go get whatever but then again i need to settle down sooner or later in life and this is the one Jeez. but right now i'm not done having fun this i'm in my mid 20s i mean do you have any suggestions if you could go back and do it all over again where, where would you shoot oh geez i don't know it's hard because um i didn't know what the fu- i just i don't know i really like being with her and we just decided to get we were like i didn't i knew i wouldn't find anybody i liked more than her so i married her but I was kind of like I wasn't in the Hall of Fame of getting late anyway, and I, I had a lot of strange pussy. I fucked a hooker in a in a building with a broken window, and I figured, you know, I've been there. Fuck it, you know, one woman. What's the big deal? Um, well, what, what but about for you, right now? You got fame and fortune. You got well, a little bit of fame, a little bit of fortune. <laughs> you can go out. You can go out and get some pretty heavy stuff right now. Right? No, I really can't. That's what keeps oh. me pretty happy is knowing that if I was single, I it would be equally bad. But uh, never mind me because I'm weird and uh, my life makes yeah, no yeah. sense. And I also took a Vicodin. But um, <laughs> you, what's with the, this woman's been hanging on for five years with you? Does she well, here's the deal. I chased her around in, in junior high school since we were like 12, 13 oh, years old. Oh, shit. This is like I, one of your dreams then. Right. I chased her around. When I finally got her, you know, it lasted for like a year or two. But now, you know, I know everything about her and we just sit around and stare at each other. Don't get married. Don't get married. If, huh? you, have, if you have doubts, don't get married. Well, I don't have doubts about later on. <clears throat> I got doubts about now. Yeah, well, right see, now, you're, you're... I'm in my prime. Well, you're kind of hedging your bets. You want her to hang around... You, but you got to be honest with her. You got to tell her I'm not done fucking. So if you're still around when I'm done fucking, uh, let's get married. Uh, but I can't help you, man. You, you get, you, if yeah. you're getting pussy, you got no business asking anybody for advice. Just fuck the pussy that you have, and then lay there and, then, that, and lay there afterwards and go, ah, oh, that was good pussy. Ah, oh, boy, did I enjoy that, that pussy. Then that, just move over to cock, huh? That's all you got to do. And then someday you'll die in a room by yourself, uh, surrounded by strangers. So good luck with that. Uh, Matt from Sacramento has been on hold longer than anybody in the world. Hello, Matt. What's up? Hey, what's up, faggot? Not much, motherfucking cuntwad. All right, good son of a whore's ass. All right. I had a parenting tip for you. Okay. Well, parenting question is actually what it was. I'm you know, those are two opposite things, but go ahead. Right, yes, most definitely. Yeah. Uh, I'm having a hard time getting my uh, my son to take a dump in the shitter. <laughs> It's uh, it's taken a long time, and he's he's to that age where he knows how to take his diaper off. Yeah. So he'll take a big shit in his diaper and then hide it, and then run out to the living room and smear this walnut corn mm-hmm. shit spread all over the couch. So it's a nuisance. Yeah, that's that's more than a nuisance. Your your son <laughs> is out of his fucking mind. Yeah. How old is I your mean, kid? Like, How old is your kid? Three and a half. Three and a half. And so he shits in his diaper and smears it on the couch. No, he shits in his diaper and hides it. And then after I wipe off the shit spread from the couch, I have to go play hide or find the diaper. Oh, I see. Because it's a game we play afterwards. Does he think this is funny? Uh, Well, there's a little chuckle from time to uh, every now and then. But 
for the most part, I think it's just he needs to be put on the shitter. And I've tried it, but it doesn't work. So what's your advice? Well, it's hard because here's the thing. Whenever you have a kid and they're shitting in their diapers, you go, when is he going to stop doing that? He's not going right. to be He's not going to be 25 shitting in his diaper. It's, at some point, he's going to stop. But you can't make him do it. You just can't. You just have to wait. But it's hard because boys... See, I got two girls, so I'm I'm okay. lucky because right, right, right. they're polite and they're nice people and they do their best. Boys are motherfuckers. I was at uh, the shit spread on the couch. Right? Yeah, I mean, there's no girl I know that would do that, but boys are fucking crazy. That's gonna be him in a fraternity someday, uh, making people eat his shit t to pledge the fraternity. I appreciate your optimism for his future. That's uh, hey, man, he's probably gonna rule the world. Absolutely. He's probably going to be fucking vice president. If you All don't, right, so if you don't, your... if you don't think Dick Cheney makes people eat eat his shit in front of him, then you're yeah, crazy. Cool. You're right. Then yeah. I am an idiot. Hey, I got another thing to ask you real quick. Yeah, go ahead. How come uh, I'm I'm from Sacramento? Last time you were at the punchline, you just dipped out the back, didn't shake any hands, take any pictures, or plug your DVDs or nothing like that. <laughs> where, where, which out the back door? Which club was this? The punchline in, over in the How About Arden complex in Sacramento. Sacramento, sir. God, that must have been a long time ago. Well, I'll tell you what, man. I used to... I haven't been on... I, this is my first tour, the one I'm doing now, since I had a show and people really come out to see me. It used to yeah, be... Yeah, I like your show. Your show's good. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Well, people used to come out to... Like, until recently, I'd be doing at a club, and people would just be there because they go to that club, usually. And so right. I always felt kind of weird hanging around, expecting people to come up and want to meet me, because often it wouldn't happen. So I didn't want to force people to feel, oh, there's the comedian. I guess I got to go tell him he's funny. Now people come to see me, and I try to come out, and, and I try to shake every hand and sign autographs and take pictures, because I feel like that's one of the reasons people come, and I want to... I might have been sick. I don't know. I'll tell you okay, what else. All right, well, I'll anticipate that next time, and I'll tell you what. Yeah. It's that front row. And you you look like somebody back in the old torture days where they just smeared him with honey and tied him up to a red ant farm. <laughs> what? Very impressive visual. Very impressive visual. Oh, because because talking to me because I'm a big red fucking guy with a white face. I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, it's, it's insanity. I mean, on TV they do something different, but in person, I mean, it's it's phenomenal. Really? I've you, never seen it before. You mean just physically? I'm very odd to look at. Yeah, I mean, like, you look like you've got red ants all over you. It's, it's, it's impressive. It's impressive. I'd embrace it if I was you. I do. I do impress it. Thank you, Matt. L yeah, no, I'm a very odd-looking guy. I don't... My body doesn't make sense. Okay, Charles? Charles, tell me your problem here. Charles? Hey, this is Trent. Uh, this is Charles in Missouri. Yeah. I've got a wife that refuses to uh, give me a blowjob. I've been married for two years, and she absolutely refuses. What, why would she blow you? G give me give me one reason why she should blow you. Oh, we're unbelievable in bed. It's really really good sex. Just no blowjobs. Period. So because the sex is great, to... but again, give me a reason why. Like, let me ask you something. If you were standing in front of yourself, would you suck your own dick? Um, if I was drunk. If you were what? Uh, if I if I was drunk and I could, I probably would. Well, give me a reason why a person who isn't you would blow you. I mean. It's just, it's a big thing to ask somebody. Right. Um, I don't know, that's a tough question. Here's the not, thing, man. Not a, I'm, a, I'm a decent looking guy. I've got a great looking wife. You guys have been married uh, for two years? Two years. How often do you have sex? We got married, that was the end of it. How uh, often do you? Three, three times a week. Jeez, that's pretty good, man. Not complaining about that. And do you it's think not, that she does, the, has, does she have sex with you usually because she really likes it or because... Um, She's doing it for you because it's her womanly duty. No, which... only because only she really likes her. She's a really good faker. You ever ask her why she doesn't want to blow you? You ever ask her that question? She thinks it's disgusting. There it is, man. I, I ask. I say, what the, what the hell? I mean... So she used I... to she used to blow you, and she thought it was disgusting, but you were dating, and you were, she did it because she thought she should. Is that the thing? Exactly, yeah. And yeah, now she doesn't want to. It's over. It's all over. You know, how do you get past that? Because it would be like, imagine if you were working somewhere, and the guy, and it's a great job, and you love it, and you're making a million dollars a year, and the guy says, I need you to start sucking my dick. If you hate sucking a dick, how do you get around that? That's... Like, that's you don't not. you don't want her to do something that she hates doing, do you? She doesn't enjoy oral sex her way either, which is weird. I don't think that's so weird. 
I you look, man. Some people like different things. Some people like people shitting in their mouths. I don't understand that either. Some people find it gross to not have shit in their mouth. What you know? What are you gonna do? Right. So you know, I don't know, man. I don't know how to tell somebody that because I can totally identify with not wanting to blow people. So you know, what can you do? Uh, I think fucking the shit out of you three times a week is pretty much she's doing her job. <laughs> That's I, the wife. I'll have to ask for. All right, man. Take it easy. Appreciate. Yeah, it's hard, man. I don't know. I, here's the thing with blowjobs and marriage. I think that. You, you fuck each other when you're married because you should and because you need to keep each other happy. But for a woman to want to blow a guy, she needs to want, like, really love the guy and everything about She needs to get past the sweatiness of his balls. She needs to get past so much. I don't know. You know what my advice would be for the guy if he's still listening is you got to, like, spend a week doing shit that you don't want to do to make her happy. Like, not even just doing what she asks you to, asks you to do. But think of shit that you think she would like. You have no idea how much power that has. If you approach it right, it is easier to get laid when you're married than it is when you're single. Because when you're single, you have to pick a girl up in a nice car. You got to take her somewhere. You got to go, oh, really? For an hour or two. You have to fucking agree with shit you don't agree with. You have to dress nice. You have to dance a whole dance and, and think of what to say. And then even then, she's probably not going to fuck you let alone blow you. But when you're married, if you fucking straighten up the magazines on the coffee table, she's going to suck your dick. Like, like, come home sometime when she's not home and do some shit in the house that she didn't even ask you to do, but you know would make her life easier, and she will c drop to her knees and suck your dick. That's what I would say to people who want their wives to blow them with their cocks in the mouth. Jason from New York City. Hey, what's up, Pat? How you doing? I'm all right. What's up? I got a quick question for you. I, I married almost five years. I'm just curious. How do I get my wife to have anal sex? I don't know. I don't know your wife. I mean, I never fucked anyone in the ass, and uh, so I don't know. I, I, you know. It's driving me nuts here. It's driving. You just have to fuck her in the ass. You're just dying I to have do it. To. I, I, it. The ass is so beautiful. You know. Have you said that to her? I said it to her. I said it's beautiful. You know, I've I've, I've done anything and everything I could, but she still says no. <laughs> You've done I, everything. I did everything. I yeah, I do. I just like you said before the bulges. I do. I pick up the magazines. I wipe down the table. Uh -huh. Take care of the kids. But and she still won't let you put your dick in her ass and pound her fucking rectum. Dude, it's fucking do not enter over there. One way street. You know, I just don't, I don't know. Again, I don't know if I could say that that's a woman's obligation to let a man fuck her up the asshole. Listen, have you ever asked her this? Have you ever asked her this? Like, you know, like the old thing when there's the old joke where you say to a woman, uh, would you let me fuck you for $10 million? And she says, yes. And then you say, would you let me fuck you for $100? And she says, what am I, what do you think, I'm a whore? And you go, well, we already established that. We're just negotiating price. You know that old joke? <laughs> Well, yeah. so say to your wife, by, by the way, I think you got to turn off your radio because I think I hear myself. Yeah. And you, Can you do uh, that? Good. Yeah, I got you. Okay. So t I say to your wife, just use your imagination, honey. What would have to happen for me to fuck you up the ass? Like, just um, it, sky's the limit. Like, uh, you know, fucking give your mother a new house. Oh, well, she already told me over her dead body that it would ever happen. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Okay, well, hey, there's a beginning. <laughs> that if you killed her, you get the fucker in the ass. I gotta take a note of that. Try to take, try to go one thing short of that. Like, hey, may, maybe tell her. How about if I, you know, how about if you gave her some drugs that knocked her, like like fifteen Percocet or something safe. Like, what if you got a guy like a anesthesiologist to put her under and you just fucked her in the ass and she woke up kind of uncomfortable? Just ask her, ask her that. That's one step back from over her dead body. But, That's not a bad idea. I got a friend at the dentist, you know? G hey, you're fucking halfway there, man. Get him to come over, put her under, you fuck her in the ass, you film it, you make some money. <laughs> she never knows nothing. Does she go on the internet? Uh, yeah, but she only uh, email and plays games. Ah, uh, yeah, see? So you could have a fucking video of your wife, you banging her in the ass, you wouldn't even know it. But you make the money off that too. You but know, seriously, try to try to get her to say a condition under which she'd let you fuck her in the ass, like like ten million dollars, you know, some crazy thing, and then start negotiating from there. Good, right, luck, good luck, go man. I sincerely hope, Jason, that you fuck your wife very hard in the ass at least once before you both die. 
I, I really hope I do. Okay, I gotta man. give it to it. All, All right, right, thanks All a lot, right. Pavel. That's an interesting want. I never wanted that. I never... I, like, now and now I want to fuck my wife in the ass, but for all the wrong reasons. Like, not as a sexual thing. I just want to fuck her in the ass uh, to get out some aggression. Uh, hello, somebody from uh, Delaware. I don't know your name, though. It's Tim, buddy. Hey, Tim, buddy. What's up? What's up, man? Love uh, fucking Lucky Louie. Love uh, Shameless. You're awesome, man. Thank you very much. Anyway, um... I'm at home now. Uh, mm -hmm. Me and my girl have been together for six years. I'm 22 years old. Wow, that's uh, so we've been amazing. together since 10th grade. Amazing. And, uh, what's up? That's amazing. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. And we're really happy together. Nothing wrong with the relationship. Sex life's awesome. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Uh, but now I'm getting the uh, marriage pressure. Mm -hmm. And the only reason I don't want to do it is because, um, you know, my job, I want to be in a good place when we do it. Yeah. But uh, I keep getting the pressure, and it's hard to say no. After we've been together for six years, so uh, what's your advice? Is there any reason outside of the the job? Well, I mean, I actually have a really great job. I own my own house and everything, mm -hmm. uh, but I just want to be, you know, I want to give her a nice wedding and all this junk. Oh, uh, Christ. So that's basically it. Is yeah, that I mean, really the only reason? It. Yeah, that's it. Do you, you don't want to fuck other people? No. You're not it's anxious? Just, you're not anxious that you may want to fuck somebody in the future? No. So really, you just, you want to give her a nice wedding? That's it. And, well, I want her to be secure too. You know, I want to. Uh, well, so what's going to happen? You marry her, and then what's going? You think is going to happen? You're going to. She's like, going to fucking uh, die of starvation. Know, like shit goes down the tubes, and like we don't have any money, and you know we're in living homeless. And shit. Do you really think that's going to happen? No, I'm, I'm exaggerating. No, you know. But you know what I mean. You know, like. So you're going to wait. Hear, you're going to wait till you hear about when people's marriages mm -hmm. where they're like not happy because you know all this shit's going wrong. I think mm -hmm. might happen. Like now it's great, but you know what happens down the road? You know when you know because your life, happening. the rest of your life is going to be uh, some great and some just shit house shitty, fucking shit, shit, shit house shitty. It's going to happen to you. You're only 22. Y you you might go through something where you get fired and you lose your insurance and your leg falls off and you got to walk around with one leg. Or you get one of those shitty prosthetic legs. You ever seen those prosthetic legs that are just fucking ugly? Kind of like <laughs> fucking pale skin tone. And you've seen great legs. You've seen legs that work like a leg. And like have a nice Nike on the foot. And then you see somebody with a shit leg and they're limping and you go, What the fuck? Why don't you get one of the nice ones, you cunt? Yeah, right? That could be you. You could have that. You could have a shitty fake leg. That that's what you're headed towards is a life of up and downs. If you get married, you're gonna get to share the great times with your girl, and you're gonna be on the fucking rock bottom together, blaming each other. Are you saying my only two choices are a shitty prosthetic leg and a half decent prosthetic leg? Yeah, those are your choices because your life is just oh god, you're headed for the worst life anyone's ever had. Oh my but, god! No, <laughs> what I'm saying is it doesn't matter, man. You what are you gonna win the lottery and then marry your wife and give her a nice wedding? Fuck weddings. Weddings are are I'm something. I'm not even out of college yet, though. You know what I mean? Well, see, now you you have different reasons. You're not a, you're a, you you're afraid of settling down. You want to do other things. You're afraid of somebody well, telling you what to do. Other things. It's that I'm just unsure. You know, I'm, a, I'm you know I'm insecure. I'm not insecure about. Yeah, the, the, it's the strangest thing. It's because like most of my friends, you know, they they have bad, It's like the other people calling in your show. You know, they have other shit going on mm -hmm. and all this junk. You know, they want to mm -hmm. fuck other girls. Me. The relationship is perfect. It's the future that I'm worried about. It's, well, the it's future. I've given her a good life after this. Well, you're, whatever your life is going to be, you, 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 if you if you marry your wife when things are good, you're going to be headed for a bad time together, no matter what. You're going to have oh, trouble good. because that's everybody's life. What are you fucking Prince cunt face? What do you have? See, this is how much I shouldn't be on the radio. I have like four words that I know how to use. Cunt. I've heard cunt at least twenty times. That's so far, all I got. So. It's all I got, man. It's I got the fastball down the middle, cunt. And I have not developed the slider. She's about to hop in the car now. Do you want to talk to her? No, but uh, but listen, man. Fucking if you if you think you're waiting for a good time to get married financially, you just it's just silly. If you love this woman enough to marry, just do it, and then just play it out the rest together. You know what's awesome, by the way, when you go broke and you have a bad time, there right. is one the two one one road leads to your your brains in a tub in a Motel Six. And the other one re leads to coming back from it, and that's being married. When you're alone and broke, fucking nobody wants to know you. Your best right. friends in the world don't even want to look at you. Coming into the bar when you're broke, 
everybody's like, fuck that guy. Even your parent, your parents are like, oh, what, is he going to move back in? Fucking faggot. You're but your wife, that your that wife will... I'm here for some positive advice. Listen to me. You are not. You only listen to half of it because you're fucking 22 and you still got cum in your ears. <laughs> that's the, that's that the scenario for you if you're single. If you're married and you run out of money, the two of you sit in a, at a table and you go, what are we going to do, honey? How are we going to do this? And she's going to help you get through that time. If you marry your wife when you're broke... That's the best time to marry your wife because that's going to be when you forge your relationship and you'll never be afraid of it. If you marry your wife when you're rich, then you're going to be afraid of being broke for the rest of your life. Right. Well, we're doing pretty good now, so... So I, marry her right the fuck know. now. Fuck her. Uh, get her to blow you and uh, and come all over each other. Good luck to you. That's enough of that shit. All right, who's been on a long time? I'm trying to be fair here. Joe from Michigan. Go uh, go ahead, Joe. Louis. Yeah. By the way, folks, this is basically a call-in show. This is what I'm doing. I got nothing else. Uh, I'm sure you hear that when I go off a call, I just become a fucking runny dump of diarrhea mouth. So go ahead, yeah. Joe. It's cool, though. You're finally hitting your groove that I getting kicked in, and you're back that little pussy down. I do feel a little better. Anyway, okay. I got a newborn baby question, little girl. Okay. I got big fingers. She's doing the breastfeeding thing. She's getting a lot of shit crumbs in the vag. Wait a, wait a minute. You've got big fingers? <laughs> you see, yeah, I want to help the wife out. Okay. I want to clean the baby up. I want to do a good job. Good for you. A, I don't want to give her a vag infection. Good for you. you got some girls. Yeah, I got good two of them. doing it without going to the kitchen sink and taking the sprayer. and. Don't you know. do that. How old, how, how old is your kid? She's about eight, nine days old. Oh, my God. That's awesome. And she still has black shit, right? It's still black? No, it turned yellow like fucking really? mustard. Really? Yeah, like wow, mustard. Man. Yeah, here's the thing. Doing the, the wife's doing the breastfeeding thing. When you have kids, when you have a girl, you are responsible for the, a tiny vagina. You have a, a manly responsibility to keep a small vagina clean and uninfected. And that's an amazing thing about having a kid because you spend your whole... First, you come out of a vagina and you spend your whole life obsessed with vaginas. And all of a sudden, you are actually spreading one and cleaning it. Hey, like, man, I got big fingers, man. I know, man. I that's wanna, the hard I part. Wanna, I don't want to tear it up. You're not going to tear it up. It's a very resilient thing. You use two fingers to spread it open. Use the. you got to use wipey things, right? I use the wipey thing. And what you do is you take the wipe, you take the wipe and you fold it up so it has a corn like an edge to it, and you work that edge in there and you wipe down from vagina to asshole. Never go the other way because that's how you get shit up there, little adorable little cunts. Uh, you got to spread it and and just go. Don't get your fingers up in there. Oh no 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 no. Just just use your fingers to spread them open and then just wipe down. Okay. You're going to be Stop fine, it. man. You're going to do a good job keeping your daughter. And next, when she's 18, asking you for money for a car, say, hey, you would have a dirty vagina if it weren't for me. So shut the fuck up. <laughs> All right. John from Vancouver. I Oh, he wanted me to do this. What did you want me to do? You How want a break. How do I follow right. that? Sorry, John. <laughs> Spreading a little fucking vagina with big fingers. Listen, John from Vancouver, hurry up because we're going to take a break now. What do you What do you got? Oh, okay, we're having a drinking game over at uh, Frunkus.net. Let me get. Let me take a get. Let me take a guess. Every time I say cunt, you drink. Well, cunt. Uh, I think we should add that. But it was uh, die or kill yourself. Oh, okay. Yeah. See, that's again. I have nothing. I'm a very. If we added, if we added cunt, we'd all be dead within about <laughs> half an hour. Probably, John. Good so luck, guys. F, F six R's. Uncus.net. Uncus.net. This is Louis C.K. You are listening to the virus. Uh, I got a DVD called Shameless. Buy it on Amazon. I'll be back after a break, motherfuckers. Cunt! Hey, this is Louis C.K. It's Louis C.K. Louis C.K. Hello, it's Louis C.K. Turn it off. If you fade out, I'll kill you. Ah, oh, you should have faded out. That was that was inelegant. Yeah. Okay, that's good. 
This is Louis C.K. You're listening to the ONA Virus Channel thing, 202 XM Radio. Uh, I want to thank Opie and Anthony, by the way, for letting me do this. Those are two really great guys. I mean that sincerely. Jim Norton, it goes without saying, is my good friend and co-star on my Shit Gone show. But uh, those are two great guys. Um, so people seem to enjoy asking me about their marriages. Listen, you know... All I can tell you is that whatever people, you know, it's hard to get parenting advice because you ask fucking doc, fuck Dr. Phil and fuck Dr. Laura. Anybody who's a doctor can't tell you anything. Your priest can't tell you anything because they just tell you what you're supposed to do. And, you know, it's, here's, I'm going to put a question out for the air. I'm going to ask you to call and answer this question. <clears throat> By the way, the phone number, which I haven't given out, given out since the beginning, is 866-969-1969. Everybody who's married, especially with kids, you've got one thing that you just want it, that you just can't say to your wife or husband. And you sit in rooms together with that on the front of your mind fucking constantly. And I want to ask you, what is the thing that you wish you could say to your spouse more than anything. Really dig deep and think of something honest. You know, like, I was talking to a friend of mine about how when you hang up the phone with your wife, your husband, you go, okay, I love you, bye. And don't you wish you could just say, okay, I love you, but I'm not in love with you, bye. And just hang up and just blurt it out. So what is the thing? I'll take calls for people that don't have that yet, but call and tell me what's the thing that you wish you could fucking say right to their motherfucking face. Okay, let's see what we got here for calls for a second. This person, uh, Sean, Sean from Huntington. What's going on? You tell me. Yo, I just got a question for you. Mm-hmm. Are you sure that was Vicodin you took and not birth control pills? Because you're talking like a woman, bro. I am, really? What did I say that sounded womanly to you? I don't know. I just, all this stuff about cleaning babies' vaginas and stuff, you know, I'm I'm used to... I don't know. I'm used to di a different Louis C.K., man. Do you have kids? Uh, no. Unfortunately, um, I don't. Well, if you got a girl... I'm you young to have kids, to tell you the truth, actually. Well, at some point, if you have a girl, she's going to have shit in her fucking pussy, and someone's going to have to get it out of there. So what can I tell you, man? I clean cunts. I got two of them. What can I do? No, normally, it's the one you thing think... if you're using your tongue to do that. You think that's woman's work? Cleaning a vagina? That's parents' work. Doesn't matter. Whoever, whoever's around when the shit goes in the pussy has got to be the person to get it out of there. So, you know, what can I tell you, man? If that sounds womanly to you, then... You no, know. no, you know what? No, I love you to death, bro. I'm, I'm just getting on your case, but, um... Yeah. What it, I don't know, man. I, I want to hear some different shit, you know? I feel like I'm listening to Oprah right now. Really? Like, do, do I sound like a... a, a no, a skinny, it's not your fault, man. It's all your callers, Do right? I sound like a, 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 a skinny black woman that should be fat... If she loved herself. Yeah, no, she's not. Fucking even... her with her skinny body. Get Let the fat out. That's you, Oprah. Why are you no, staying skinny you know. for all the fucking ugly men in the world? Just be a big, fat black lady. Who would not want to be a big, fat black lady? I know. Uh, I probably would. As long as I didn't cut shit for it. <laughs> all right, Sean. Sorry if well, this is. Quick, I'm know, sorry if this is. If this is one note, well, I don't know what else to talk about. What do you tell, tell me? Something you'd like to talk about? Go ahead. You know what, man? No, I was just gonna say. I think you're doing a great job, considering you're having all these people call in, pretty much asking you the same question in 20 different ways. It, it only yeah, sounds yeah. like that to you because you don't have kids. But tell me something no, that you'd like. No, no, no. You're right. But, but totally, I'm not being. You're handling well. You make sense, but. I don't know, man. Maybe next time. I'm hoping you're doing this again because I love you to death. Thanks, man. Maybe bring like a newspaper. Oh, you want me to talk? Well, here's the thing, because I, I thought about what am I going to do on this show. Obviously, I didn't think it out uh, to an actual idea, but w I thought about, because that's what I have friends who do the radio. I say, what do you do? They say, well, get the newspaper. Here's the thing. It's Saturday night. It's almost midnight. Fucking, who had a crack at the newspaper? Fucking Jay Leno with his shitty jokes, uh, John uh, Stewart, Conan, uh, fucking Jimmy Kimmel. It's it, like, when I used I used to write for Conan... And I yeah. hated knowing what fucking Paris Hilton is doing and what fucking all these... I just... Michael Jackson. I, you know, I just don't give a shit about what's happening in the world. America's just a shit cunt of a country, and I just don't care what's in the news. I really don't. Yeah, you, you know what? I feel you, but I mm. feel like we need someone like you who will talk about it and use the word cunt. Okay, well, give me, a, give me a topic. 
and I'll be glad to use cunt within that context. Oh, man. Oof. Come on, Sean. Oh, put, put me on the spot. What, right, what's been the... really bothering you lately? Tell me something that's really bugging you. I haven't gotten laid for some time. Yeah, you see? <laughs> Everybody's got the same fucking problem. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's very, it's very Was that in the news? Was it in the on the front page of the post that no one wants to suck your dick? No. You know what? Maybe it's, maybe it should be. Maybe then I could find someone to suck my dick. I think you know what, man. Find a way to get it on the front page of the post that you want to get blown. That's so possible. You could you know commit what, a terrorist act. You can kill your father. <laughs> it, think it out for a second. You shoot your father. In pub, like at Yankee State, take your father to a game at Yankee Stadium, shoot him in fucking Loge, and you will be on the front page of the Post, and they ask you why did you do it, and you go because nobody will fuck me. You will go to prison and get letters up the ass, and have a conjugal visit and get fucked. That's my yeah, advice but, to you, Sean. But I think the only problem would be I'd be getting fucked in the ass then. Hey, then you're getting fucked in the ass and getting blown. Uh, how do you beat right, that? Man. You're onto something, bro. All right, good luck, man. But, all right. Uh, let's see what. Here's another off-topic thing here. Uh, Austin from Austin. Are you? What's your name? I don't know. They they wrote it down wrong here. I think. No, it is. I'm Austin from Austin. Oh, that sucks. What's up, man? It's, I moved there. Um, I'll have two things. I uh, I want uh, two names besides Cunty McShitballs. I have twins that are doing a little over a month. I wonder if you have any ideas on names for them. A boy and a girl. A boy and a girl, and you want names. Um, and they're going to be twins? Two girls, a girl and a boy at the same time? That's fucking, yeah. wow. What, what should you call them? What, what does your wife want to call them? Uh, we, we have no idea. We've been kind of looking at books and stuff. And she likes boring shit, Sarah and Elizabeth and Kimberly. I want something different. And I know you can, you have a creative mind, so I was going to well, Why do you want something different? See, this is the thing. People, how old are you? 26. So you're a young you got young guy in your 20s and you live in Austin, Texas, which is like a kind of alt community. You're like cool. Yeah. You have like a little uh, soul patch and uh, <laughs> and you you know Actually, three years ago I did yes. Okay, so you you haven't really gotten your hands around the fact that you're having a kid yet. The idea of having a kid naming one Sean and the other one uh, fucking Brittany. Uh, and you, you're going to be cleaning uh, cleaning up. You, you want to kill yourself. So you're trying exactly. to cool it up. You want to name them like fucking Lemon and Dylan. Not like Savannah or Sierra or anything Yeah, see, like that. all that like, shit, that's just denial. Those are just the names that people give their kids because they haven't, they, they haven't gotten around the idea because they think it's boring and suburban to have children. And it ain't. It's fucking profound. It brings you to the point of insanity and suicide and murder, triple fucking suicide murder. <laughs> and if you want yeah. to talk about, like, drugs being cool and cool bands and, like, you're living on the edge and you're Tony Hawk on, on a skateboard, there is nothing more fucked up and dark and fucking evil than being a parent. So just name your kids fucking Cynthia and Frank and strap yourself in for a fucked up life. Yeah, exactly. I can't stand that shit. Just totally name them just something. Just fucking name them something. It doesn't matter. Fucking John Lennon's name was John. Fucking what a loser. <laughs> how, how about don't name them Austin from Austin? Yeah, don't do that. Back, my parents are. Yeah, don't do uh, that. Good luck, also, man. Hey, hey, yeah. hey! You like uh, you like the classic rock? Yeah, is mostly. Any, I. Was there, oh, there any current stuff you like? You, have you have you heard of Wolf Mother? No idea. I have no idea who anybody is. I really don't. I don't I was just just curious. No, I I wish I had any idea what any music is. Uh, right, well, I like you know what I listen to. This is what's fucked up. I I'll listen to that like to share that song "Believe" by Share. Like while I'm running, I'll listen to that and it'll make me run faster. Really? <laughs> okay. Are you like that that one piece uh, bathing suit thing up your cock. Oh, totally. You wore in that video. Oh, of you course. Are? Yeah. Good. Yes, I am. That's an awesome visual. All right, Austin. Take care. I hope that Blake from uh, that's driving Oklahoma City is still listening. If if he is, just call me and tell me if, if this was a waste of your time. Thirty five minutes, James from DC has been waiting. What's up, James? Hey, Louis. What's up, man? Not much. Tell me what's up with you. All right. Uh, first, I want to answer your, uh, your your honesty question. Yeah. Um, I always want to tell my wife I hate the kids. Wow. I got it. I got really. I got a nine-year-old stepson and a two-year-old, you know, real son. Uh-huh. <laughs> and, uh huh. And 
Dude, every day there's something happens that takes all the magic out of their life. Now, wait one second. You have a two-year-old who is your kid and a nine-year-old stepson. Right, exactly. Explain that to me. So you had a two-year-old with somebody else first? No, no, uh, uh, no. I met my wife when she had um, she had her son when she was 15. Oh, okay, so he's nine. Yeah, exactly. You've got a nine-year-old stepson and a two-year-old you kid. Yeah, the two-year-old uh, me kid is an us kid. I got so you. Been, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so you hate them. You think they suck. I think they suck probably 85% of the time. Right. Well, that's not bad, by the way. Um, but And you're afraid to tell your wife because why? I'm afraid because that, to, to a woman and to a mother, that is probably the most disturbing thing. Yeah, but you, is your wife a woman or a What's her name? Oh, um, her name is Jessica. So she's not a, a woman, a mother. She's this person that you live with. Well, she's, um, well, we've been married for two years. Are you guys happy? You have a good relationship? Yeah, yeah, we do. So you fucking turn to her while you guys are together and say, I fucking hate those kids. I'm telling you, that's what I feel right now. I fucking hate them. Well, see, she's 24, so she's still got all this idol, you know, all this ideology that uh, you know parents are the 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 angels of their their kids' lives and all this. Yeah, well, no, you're not. You're oh, not. oh, believe me, I know. How, how old are you? I'm 28. Yeah, so you know, and uh, she's been a mother most of her life too. Exactly. Yeah. So more than, yeah, more than half of her life. She needs to know that you're fucking feeling stress. Just say it. Just say I fucking sometimes I hate. Don't say I hate them like you sealed the deal. <laughs> Like it's too late. <laughs> Just say sometimes I fucking hate them. You know what? Yeah. She's a wife and a mother, and part of her uh, the list of things to do is to make is to help you be a dad. And just like you're giving her so much support as a mother that you don't even want to tell her how stressed out you are. Fucking well, you share your stress with. Her. God, this sounds too serious. I'm supposed to be a fucking comedian. Tell your wife I hate those little fucking faggots. <laughs> I'm just trying to juice it up so it's half funny. But to tell her that you're stressed out, and uh, maybe she'll find a way to make it easier for you, or, or I'd say something to you to make you hate them less. Yeah, well, tell you what, now, my, my question for you was, in, yeah. in that same comic vein, yeah. um, dude, I'm an opener right now. You know, I've been opening for about a year and a half, and I'm finally getting to a point where I can go ahead and go out on the road. Um, oh, you're a comedian. Don't just yeah, say opener. Exactly. Nobody knows what the fuck you're talking about. All right, go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. Were you a comic when you got married? No, I wasn't. I started doing stand up when I was seventeen years old. How did you sell that shit to her? Like, hey, look, I'm gonna be gone for weeks at a time. Uh, I'm, I promise I will turn down after show pussy. Yeah. I mean, how do you sell it? That's very hard to sell. It's a very. If you weren't, a, were you a comedian when you married her? No, I just started. That's really hard. See, I was a comedian already, and she already knew the, what the package was. So I don't know, man. You're gonna have to work that out. But just tell her you want to do it and tell her you hate your kids and see what she says. The worst thing she can do is say something back. That's the worst that would happen. That's all. And then you hear what she says. Or leave. All right. Good luck, man. All right. Thanks, love. All right. Let's see. Some of these people that want to tell me stuff that they want to say to their wives. Chris from Central Jersey, what do you want to tell your wife that did bed so badly but you're afraid to say it? Yo, Lily. First off, you're funny. I love your show, man. Thanks, Chris. You think you're gonna, they're going to bring it back or what? Oh, well, Lucky Louie? No, yeah. that's that's gone for good. Uh, we might, I might do a, a, a another sitcom uh, like it somewhere else. We'll see. I'm trying to work on something, but HBO Lucky Louie, that's that's dead. Sure. Uh, yeah, my wife, my wife's cunt stinks like shit. Okay, and that's uh, what you want to tell her. Does your wife ever have that problem? Uh, what do you want I to wouldn't know what my wife's vagina smells like. Uh, I haven't seen yeah. it for 14 years. <laughs> um, but you. Your wife's cunt stinks like shit. Yeah, man, it really smells like I like I think it's like dripping from her something. Has it always? Uh, a good amount of time. Yeah. How long you been together for? Um, we got married about 2 years ago. Did your wife's cunt smell when you married her? <laughs> no, man, it she, it didn't at all. Uh, well, look, you uh, you know what point is? I'm 5:30 30 corn 30. What is what am I hearing back there? I'm sorry, man. I'm just trying to pick up some buds right now. You're trying to pick up some what? Some weed. <laughs> oh, you, so you're trying to buy pot and find out why your wife's pussy smells at the same time. You are a multitasking motherfucker. Yeah, I'm crazy, man. All right, all right just, can you just answer me, and then I'll listen to you on the radio? Uh, totally, man. Listen, uh, well, here's the thing. Why did you marry her? So you, she, her pussy didn't smell bad when you married her. And he's gone. Okay, here's the thing. Uh, you, that's an easy one to tell your wife. 
I mean, I don't think that I would say your cunt smells like shit. I think probably she'll hear those words more than she'll hear the idea behind them. Dress it up a little bit. Say your your vagina is awfully it, it, uh, aromatic lately in a negative way. She shouldn't have a smelly fucking pussy. That's not fucking, that's not a nice thing. That why are you afraid to say that to your wife? Just tell her, honey, your your pussy, whatever you call it to her. Like every woman has a word that she wants her husband to call her pussy. While you're fucking, some women while they're being fucked, they like it being called a cunt, but not not in polite conversation. Ask her why it smells and tell her it's bumming you out. Jesus. Do you think she would hesitate to tell you that your balls stink, which they do? All right, Joe from Utah. Hello. What's up, Joe? What are you afraid to tell your wife that you're dying to tell her? Well, um, when I'm alone, I like to rub my ass hole, my asshole. <laughs> Not only that, but after a long day, I'd just like to see what it smells like. Okay, you like to rub your asshole and then smell your fingers. Is that the idea? Yeah, I smell my fingers right after rubbing it just to see, just like a, I don't know, like, just to check. I like to smell that too. <laughs> you like to smell. And this is something that you're dying to tell your wife. Well, I told her that I want to share a secret with her if she shares one with me, and I thought that would be a good one to share. Think of another one. I, you know, okay. here's the thing. There's nothing wrong with what you're doing, by the way. I think what you're doing is awesome. It's totally, do it's totally self pleasure. You're getting into yourself. Nothing wrong with it. But nobody, and I mean nobody, has to know about it. I don't mind knowing about it. Listen, when I was, I remember when I was uh, staying home from school once. I was sick, and I think I was like ten years old. And I had really bad gas, so I, I sat on a pillow in front of the TV, and I farted into the pillow for, like, two hours. Just kept farting into the pillow. And then I took a big, deep whiff, and to this date, in 40 years of my life, I've never I've never paralleled that smell. Like, I've never fucking... That bar is set so high. It's the worst and best thing I ever smelled. I'm fucking... Like I'm with you so much on scratching your asshole and smelling the fingers. But... How about Farting into your hand and smelling it. Totally, okay. dude. We're like blood brothers. But n no woman you're married to needs to hear this. No reason for her to know it. I don't know. I mean, if you're dying to tell her, maybe there's a reason. You know, what's the worst thing? Tell her. Tell her. See what happens. She's not going to leave you because of that. She might not fuck you for closer. six months. But closer. what's that? I thought it would just bring us closer. It, it might. Understand me better. I think try to pair it up with something else. Like say something like uh i don't know i can't think of something else but you know <laughs> fuck it tell her good luck right. Ma maybe she'll tell you that um uh she once uh kill you know killed a baby and and uh, uh threw it off a bridge and then you'll wish you hadn't told her about the the butt smell uh good luck man all right here's don from new york this is more the kind of thing that i was thinking of don what do you want what do you want to tell your wife hey Lou, how are you all right hey um well, it started with the other conversation you had. Been married for thirteen, uh, with her thirteen years, married for eight. Wow. Very unhappy. Uh huh. Kids? Now, any, I, any kids? Four kids. Four kids. Okay, go ahead. Uh, and all I do now every day is just want, wish that she would just die. That's what I wish I could tell her <laughs> is that I wish she would just die. This is more like it. This is what I thought I would hear. I, These I, are the kind of things that you live because, with in a marriage yeah, exactly. inside of your head all the time, driving next door. You're saying something like, I don't know, maybe we should have turned back there. Or you're saying something like, what time should we call your parents and let them know that we're going to be late? But what you're really thinking is, I wish that you would fucking die. Right? That's it. That's more I, like I it. People are... Get Ill and yeah. Die, See, get that's... Accident, yes. Fuck. People are calling saying, I want to smell my own fucking finger in my ass. This is what people want to say to their spouses. Um, how do you think she feels about you? think she feels the same? Sometimes I do. Well, I think we're both, uh, we both get into a, a rut. We're both unhappy. Well, I think... I might be a little more extreme about it than she is. I don't know. I think that it's a good idea to open the conversation and say, how fucking, how much of a bummer is this right now, honey? How much does this shit suck? Sometimes I wish you would die. I really do. Do you love her? Do you have any love for her at all? I do, I guess. I I, I could see myself without her. But you've got four kids. How young is how young is the, how old is the youngest kid? 
Uh, seven-year-old twins. Wow. Holy shit, man. Yeah. Fucking, and what, how old are the other two? I've got a 15-year-old, a 10-year-old, and then seven-year-old. Oh, motherfucking shit. Oh, that's hard. You know, this is how it is with parents. All you got to do is tell the other parent what your configuration is, and they just sit, they have to sit down and shake their heads. Like, anytime you ask a parent, hey, what do you, a parent asks you, what do you got? And you go, oh, three girls, five, two, and one, and they go, oh. Yeah, exactly. I get that, and I'm not talking about, like, burnt out dads. I've had soccer moms come up to me, like in Wisconsin, church mothers, and they say, oh, you have kids, what are they? And I go, five and two, and they're both girls, and they, and they go, oh, cunt, that's awful. Kill yourself. Yeah. You can, look, you guys, I don't see an easy way out. No, there isn't, but you're doing something really hard, and you, it, there's no way to do it without fucking wanting each other to die. It's, it's a, I think it's a very understandable fantasy. You know, like, I remember wanting my parents to die when I was a kid so that I could be special in school that the next day. Like, so that people would right, talk to right. me. You know, you, you're picturing, like, a release. Uh, if you go into the fantasy far enough, it'll start to suck <laughs> pretty bad. <laughs> but uh, um, but you should totally acknowledge how hard it is with your wife. You should totally say uh, sometimes you want her to die. Just fucking say it. Good luck, man. All right, thanks. All right, Russ from Pennsylvania has something uh, something untoward to say to me. Go ahead, Russ. Yo, Louie. Yeah. Hey, you listen to Cher when you run? Sure. I just watched um, Shameless Thursday. When yeah. the fuck do you run? I know, big fat man, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Here's, this is the thing, Russ. That's how much I eat. I fucking catch up with the fact that I run often six miles at a time, and some when I'm on a good roll, I will run uh, three, four times... A week to this. Listen to this. Listen, doesn't this make you want to pick up, pick them up, and put them down? Listen to this. It's when it really starts to roll, though, when the beat comes in. He goes, "Oh yeah, oh, I'm running," and like I'm pumping my arms, and I'm going, going like, whoo, whoo, "Go share, get in there," and then it reaches this next level. Ready? This is when you really start to run. Ah. Oh. Oh yeah, looking at the fag next to you on the treadmill, and you look at him and you both wink and nod, and it's totally not gay. It's just that a, a gay man and a straight man can both listen to share and work their fucking their cardiovascular. It's good shit, man. Okay, turn it down. What the fuck do you eat when you're done running? Fucking a cow and a fucking donut, pretty much. That's how much I fucking eat. I actually, to work, to get ready for Shameless, by the way, I worked out in a boxing gym with a boxing trainer, one-on-one. -on -one. I hit a heavy bag. I hit a speed bag. We did core training. I fucking worked my ass off to get physically in shape. Not to look good, just to be able to be fucking top form for one hour of stand-up. That's how I, I train as a boxer to do stand-up comedy, and I weigh 250 motherfucking pounds because I, I can't... I can't stop eating. The guy. What's that? I hope you didn't have to pay him. Oh, the dude? Well, sure I did, yeah. You can't well, do I'm a fat fuck myself, so I'm just fucking with you. So. No, listen, I don't feel bad. No, you're not making me feel bad, but it's a good question. You look oh, at a it person, wasn't meant to. No, you look at a guy like me and you go, how are you running? But I don't run to lose weight. I run to, to, to dig deep and to find and to, to get uh, discipline and to fight fear. The, my boxing trainer told me weak, uh, a pain is weakness leaving your body. So I like to put myself to the edge of pain and dig deep. That's why I do it. Uh, but I don't lose weight because then I eat fucking like... When I order room service at a hotel, they always ask when I'm done ordering. They say, how many are eating? How many are we serving? Because they think there must be 15 people up there. I'm a fat shit, Russ. It's just the way. You just got to give into it. Thanks yeah, for calling. Yeah, I know. I am too. All right, folks, you're listening to Louis C.K. on uh, what do we got going on, Danny? Do we have to? Do you want to break now, or are you saying yes? I don't know. You're making weird hand signals. Yes. All right, we're going to have a break, and then we're going to come back for one more segment. And uh, tell me uh, more shit you want to say to your spouse. Uh, you guys have been great on the phones. Thanks for calling. We're going to do one more round and see how this goes. Anybody who doesn't like what they're hearing, I'm sincerely sorry. The Vicodin is already wearing off. Uh, God bless you, uh, even though he doesn't exist. Louis C.K. It's Louis C.K. on the virus is who you're listening to. 
By the way, please buy my DVD. It's called Shameless. It's my one-hour HBO special. I really want you to buy it because I get some of the money and because I want people to watch me doing stand-up comedy. Uh, it's on Amazon and not in many stores. <laughs> I go into a store and I look and I never find it. What are you going to do? Um, this is going to be our last segment here. We've got about, I don't know, 20 minutes. Um, you know, everybody seems to be calling about this one point in your marriage where you, you had kids and you hit this fucking skid, this ugly skid. And about, I don't know what the statistic is, but that is exactly where 70% of marriages go to hell. And the other 30 arise from the ashes and somehow you find a way uh, to love each other. Oh, here's Blake from Oklahoma City. You there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, so you called when it started and you wanted to know what the fuck was going on. <laughs> yeah, it has been an amazing two and a half hours. Oh, good, man. I'm glad. I'm glad, it, yeah, glad you no, dug seriously. it. Seriously. No, it was fun to listen. I got two things, though. Go. Uh, what I'd like to say to my girlfriend's mom when she comes over unannounced, mm -hmm. I want to tell her what I want to say to my girlfriend. I want to tell my girlfriend that I will shove a pool cue up her ass if she walks in the door one more time unannounced when we're in bed on Saturday morning. I can't. That's the one thing I can't. My girlfriend's cool as shit. I just can't stand that shit. But but what, what if you're you're afraid to say that to her though? Why? Like, are you afraid? I don't to want to tell her I want to beat the fuck out of her mom. I, 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 I tell her it's annoying, but I don't want to. My true feelings are much more violent. You got to tell her your true feelings. I mean, you may not have to tell her exactly what you would do. Now, you know what? How is, you know, what's your girlfriend like? What, what if you, what have you said that to her about uh, somebody at, at work? Would she she her ass off. Yeah. Yeah. So. You know what, man? I mean, but her and her mom are best friends. It's just her and her mom. That's like her sister. It's a whole... All right, well, then um, here's the two questions. One is, how bad is it? Like, does it make you want to fucking... Does it really make you unhappy, or is it something that makes you sigh really hard? And second okay. of all, if it's making you that unhappy, you got to fucking tell her exactly how bad it is. You got to. Yeah, at first, it was the... Uh, whatever, but now, I mean, a year into it of that happening every fucking Saturday morning. Yeah, I no, you have every right to tell her, and here's the thing. Here's the, the caveat to saying the thing to your wife or husband that you wish you could say, is that you, yeah. it doesn't mean you're gonna get what you want. <laughs> you gotta uh, yeah. hear the It may be just a way, it may be a fucking, uh, trial balloon. You well, see, that's the thing. If it, yeah, if it keeps going the same way, and now she knows every time she walks in the door, I wanna stick a pull cue up her ass, I don't, does that make anything better? Um, it just might. It, you know, because it's really going on in your head. So here's the thing. You say that to your girlfriend, and she'll either say, dude, I'm feeling you. It's really hard for me to say no to my mom. Yeah. Or, or, in which case, you'll have a new understanding, and you'll actually probably be have a better time when her mother comes over. Or she'll say, D if you ever say that to me again, I'll fucking leave you. And then you know where, she, <laughs> you, know where you stand. <laughs> you said, did you have another thing? Uh, it's not that funny. I thought it was going to be, then I just decided not to say it. All right, man. Well, well. Good luck. Come to Oklahoma City. It's more beautiful than ever. Good luck, man. I like old Oklahoma. I like the surrounding area. There's some lake there that I, I I once was driving my dog across the country, and I stopped by some lake by Oklahoma City, and I looked at the lake. Uh, you, uh, uh, Hefner. Maybe that was it. But I there's was driving. There's restaurants on and everything. Yeah. I was driving a, a, a Navigator, Lincoln Navigator that I rented. And I went yeah. down this dirt road, and we're going down this dirt road, and it got a little smaller and started getting really bumpy. And it's a yeah. rental, so I gunned it, and we're going over these bumps. <laughs> and it got smaller and smaller, and it got so small, and the bumps got bigger, and they became jumps, and then there was tires. And I realized I was on a motocross track. <laughs> I was like on a, on a dirt bike track with a fucking Lincoln Navigator. And I did the whole track, and my dog had a black eye when it was over. <laughs> Blake, uh, good luck in Oklahoma. Thanks for listening. All right, thanks, see you, man. All right, let's see what other things people don't want. Pedro, Pedro, Pedro from Washington D.C. Are you there? Pedro, Pedro, Hello? Pedro, talk. Pedro. It says Pedro on my fucking thing. I don't know what's your name. Drew. <laughs> Fucking Pedro. <laughs> Wait, what's wrong with being Pedro for a minute? Uh, I don't know. All right, go ahead, man. What's up? I I just want to tell my girlfriend to lose some fucking weight. Yeah, that's a hard one, man. You know, it, it is not bad. I mean, I met her when she was big. Yeah. 
But it's one of those things where it's like I'm looking at her after sex or we're out and about and I'm like, God, you know, would it kill you to lift some weights or some shit like that? How old are you? I'm 28. And she's what? 25. But she's your girlfriend. Are you going to get married? Uh, no, nah, nah, not yet. All right, then don't say it. Here's the thing. If you're married, then you got to say some shit to each other because you're locked. And by the way, by married, I'm talking about married with kids. If you don't have kids, you're not fucking married. You're dating and you had a big party and annoyed everybody. Nobody gives a shit. If you're married, you can leave and nobody cares. But, and if you're not even married, don't know. Don't, you should be polite to this person. This is a person who's sharing time with you and who's uh, having sex with you hopefully now and again. And that's somebody you want to be polite to and you want to keep happy. Uh, even okay. if you have to lie. If you marry her and have kids and her fat body starts making you want to die a death, you need to tell her. But right now, yeah, don't say that shit to her. Man. You're just going to make her feel really bad because I can tell you from experience that people that are fat can't lose weight. They just can't. Mm, nah, it depends, though. All that right, well, happen. well, don't say it to her, man. Good luck to you, though. All right, thank you. All right Pedro, you fucking spick. Uh, Billy, Billy, what's up, man? Hey, Louis, love uh, Shameless. Thanks, man. Uh, I'm not married. I'm only 16. Uh, <laughs> okay. How do, I get, how do I get my girl to strip for me? Oh, shit. How old is she? 16. Oh, man. I, I can't help you. I don't know. That's You guys are really young. You can't make her. She's fucking... You, if you get her to do anything, you're, you're, you're a rock star. I don't know. Yeah, that's definitely not. <laughs> I don't know, man. Good luck, Billy. God bless you. You got your life ahead of you. Don't, don't stay in school. Don't join the army, please. All right. I don't mean that. You know, people that join the army are doing a great thing. I just, uh, uh, I don't just don't, I just don't want him to die. He's getting all that pussy. It's great news. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, Rocky from Nolans, another Nolans dude. What's up, man? Oh, Louis, love you, baby. Thanks, man. I want to set up my small scenario here. Okay. I'm a single guy. I got a couple hundred thousand dollar house, my brand new Harley, all mm. this. I meet a cougar in the grocery store. She's like 15 years old than me. Mm -hmm. So every once in a while, I'd, you know, we'd pound each other and do whatever. Last time she came over. Wait a minute. Slow down. Just one second, Rocky. What's a cougar? Oh, an older woman. Oh, I never heard that before. Yeah, she's a cougar. She's a MILF, I guess you could say. Okay, so you're 33? And she's 48. And she's 48. You're banging a cougar that you met in a grocery store. You've got a house and a Harley. I'm 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 a happy man. I got my life ahead of me. Okay, so what's the what's the where's the rub? Last time I was with her, mm -hmm. and I'm getting ready to freaking empty my bag. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I was being a gentleman. Where do you want it at? And she mm -hmm. tells me, I want you to come inside me, baby. I want to have your child. Yeah. That needless to say, there was blue balls that night. Yeah. Well, I you know so what's that just sounds like a good story. But what, how can I help you? Um, I'm wondering, how would you react to that? The sex was great, all of that. I haven't spoken to her since. It, it freaked me out. I saw my life pass before my eyes. Rocky, I think you got to find yourself another cougar who don't want kids. Oh, it scared me, man. I even had a, a conversation with her about it. She was like, oh, I'm too old. I don't want any children. So right. we had a bunch of drinks that night. Yeah. And I guess the truth came to the top. So she said the thing that she was dying to say. God bless her. Well, you know, look, man. It sounds like you're having like a passionate and interesting life. You're in New Orleans driving a Harley and fucking an old woman who wants a kid. I, I fucking envy you, Rocky. Dude, trust me, man. It ain't as glorious as it seems. No, it's I'm awesome. A good fucking time, man. Good for you, man. Keep it up. All right, uh, here we go. Matt, Matt from New Jersey sounds like he's on the on the right track here with this. What's up, Matt? Louie, how are you tonight? I'm okay. Fantastic. I was listening. I, I only caught that about the last 20 minutes of your show. I'm not married. Okay. Uh, but I'm 35. Had a great life. Always getting laid. I'm a DJ. I was a singer for a band. Mm -hmm. Never had any problem getting pussy. Never had a serious girlfriend that I actually liked until about six months ago. Okay. Meet this girl, start dating them. I'm absolutely in love with her. Great. This is the girl who I will be with until one of us dies. Great. But she just moved in about three weeks ago. She moved into my place. Yeah. And things are still going well, but mm -hmm. I, I find myself looking at her, hoping that, you know, just like, you know, can I get back to my shit now? Can you die? Because I'm not going to break up with her, because I do love her. Right, you yeah. just want her to die in increments. Yeah. You want her to die 
for like 20 minutes so you can watch something on TV and then come back to life? Hey, you know, pretty much that. Or go out and, you know... I'm, well, that's you know, the whole thing. When you really throw in with somebody, you got to share the shit and the shinola both. You have to... Boy, is that the worst thing I ever said on the radio. No, I, 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 should be fi- I should be fined by the FCC for being boring. No, you're, you're great, man. Hey, can I ask you a question about yeah. Lucky Louie? Oh, go ahead. All right, I loved the show. I watched uh, watched every episode. Thank you. How come we saw Dick a bunch of times but no tits? Uh, why would you see? It's a comedy show. Dicks are funny and tits are are are. Uh, you can't jerk off and laugh at the same time. That's all I no, would say. But, you know, but you you know, Porky's was a comedy with lots of tits. If you thought that movie was funny, you're out of your mind. Uh, well, you know, when I was 13, it was hilarious. Exactly. Was, exactly. No, thanks a lot, Matt. Take care. Right, uh, a- oh, I got a question from uh, Pablo in El Paso. What's up, Pablo? Yeah, I'm, I want to do your big favorite, Louie, and save your show. Thank you, man. I, I want to fuck Condoleezza Rice and rape her in her mouth. Listen, man, you, you're you not alone. Go ahead. I want to, I want to fuck Condoleezza Rice. Hopefully, you have fucking Laura Bush in the ass. All right, okay, take it easy. We know where this leads. I, I want to, I'm saving your show. You want to be suspended for 30 days. Don't worry about it. I got you. Okay. All right, thanks. That's it? That's what you had to say? I guess that's it. Okay, um, I want to. Somebody's been on here. Okay, sorry, I'm bad at uh, all things. Jen from Nassau, what's up? Hello. Wow, Pablo gives all youth of the minority cultures a really bad name right now. I'm sorry. I know he gives he's all what? <laughs> he gives minority youth male minority youth. I love how though. Name. I love how white people like if one person who sounds brown says one bad thing, they go, "You oh, see, yeah. you see those no. people." And no, meanwhile, white. white people are fucking uh, no, pardoning are Scooter the Libby, and somehow it's not a white problem. It's just one guy. Uh, You're but absolutely right. White people are the worst. It's I, good I, to I, have a woman calling. By the way, if there are any women that want to say what they want to say to their husbands, I'd appreciate it because this is a little one sided. But go ahead, Jen. What's up? They told me to be fast. I'm supposed to be the pharmaceutical overdose call, but okay. I've been on hold for like a half an hour, and I have something to say about almost everything. Sorry, Jen, but go ahead. <laughs> um, first of all, yeah, you're talking a lot, and it's good, and it's the Vicodin. I hate to say it, but it is. Oh, okay. You think the Vicodin think is making good. the show better? No, it just makes you more chatty. Yeah, I think you're right. I'm telling you, your mind starts racing and your mouth just opens. But yeah, I, I think... Anyway... I do want to touch a little on the what to say to your spouse. Thing. Please tell me, yeah. These people, uh, they should not be married if they did not marry that person, already being able to say that whatever they want to their spouse. Well, you know what? It ain't that easy, you though, know? because you're with, yeah, the person every, you're with the person all day, every day. It's very hard to say, there's times I wish you were dead, and then go uh, and go to Ikea together. Listen, Lou. If you're if you're thinking of saying that to your spouse, I yeah. don't think you should be spouse anymore then. Yeah, but no marry marriage. How Are you married? I am not. <laughs> you're not married? I, I am not. Jen, I know you were on hold for 30 minutes, but shut the fuck up. You're gone. If you're not, you have no idea what these fucking people are going through. There's no marriage that doesn't get to a point where you want the motherfucker dead. It's just the way it is. Whether you say it or not is a different story. Alex, what's up? Alex. Yo. Talk, baby. Hey, what's going on, man? I got, a, I got an interesting situation here. Okay. You gotta go so, fast. Uh, yeah, 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 I'm cool. Uh, so I, I went out with this girl for two years. Like, so I'm only 20 years old. So I mean, I, you know, I'm just calling for a little bit of advice. But uh, lately, I'm in a band and playing a lot of shows. Been getting laid pretty often. Um, but I just can't seem to seal the deal. You know? What uh, do you mean you haven't fucked her yet? Uh, no, 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 no. I mean, I, I, I banged a lot of girls, but like this one girl, she was like the first girl I ever had sex with, and she just knew how to do it. She knew what was going on, and like mm-hmm. you know, I kind of got into like the whole pattern where you know she knew what was going on, and I don't know, like I just I can't seem to uh, find another girl who was as good. Uh, well, how old are you? Twenty. Twenty. I'm hanging up on him. I got no sympathy for anybody who's 20. You could just, you know, jit, turn gay for five years and try that, and you'll still be only 25. So I just, how can I, how can I feel you, man? You seem like a nice guy, but I, I got no sympathy. Um, okay, Scott, what's up, Scott? Hey, what's up, my brother? I'm, uh, what's going on? One thing I got to say to my wife is okay. shut up. Shut the fuck up. Uh huh. Just stop. It's just stop fucking whining. Okay. I, I just can't fucking handle it. Yeah, no. Anymore. 
That's it. It's over. You just can't take it. How, how long have you been together? Uh, fifteen years. That's a long fucking time. Yeah. Boy, there's no cure for that feeling, boy. But see, it'd be great. Be fine. Everybody's happy. We're yeah. Doing good. And then she just fucking that 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 that. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> fucking just go. Fucking somewhere else and just fucking go for a minute. And just leave me alone to collect my goddamn thoughts. Because this fucking blah, blah, blah is fucking driving me Here's up. the thing. You need to start saying shit like this to your wife. I need a big fucking break from you. And it, whether that hurts your feelings or not is is something you got to deal with. But I need to go somewhere and be away from your fucking mouth for a little while. Here's the you need to I'm just recharge your batteries in another room. i got to hang up on you just because we're running out of time. But you need to just say the shit. I've started to say shit to my wife that I just, instead of, what why, fucking wives hate ambiguity honey it's not or like making up a thing i don't really want to do it because just say i just don't want to hear it right now you're really bumming me out you need to know that and it puts the ball in her court what can i say i wish a woman called are we running out of time now are we just about done so, no, you've got a few minutes. i got a few minutes all right we got only one call anyway here left Br Br brian what's up brian how's it going yeah my wife when I sleep, I wake up, my cock is in her mouth. Uh-huh. You know, I'm always getting a blowjob. Okay. I'm awake when I'm asleep. So she's and always blowing, she's just constantly blowing you? Yes. How old are you, I'm Brian? Fifty-five. And how old is your wife? Fifty-one. And she just loves sucking, does this bother you? No, hell no. I think it's great. <laughs> so do I. Yeah, so you're just you. This is like the joke. Uh, I'm fucking an 18 year old girl. Why, you're the thing that ends with I'm telling everybody. You're just calling to brag that your wife still blows you constantly. Yes, I am. I think your wife should get the Congressional Medal of Honor. Right. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Megan. Are you there? This, she doesn't look like she's on there. Megan, what's up? Hi. Hello. Hi, Megan. Hi, I'm, um, I have a three and a half year old son. Uh huh. And my son, I just want to tell my husband that he, we both work, but I also, I work for a family business, but I take care of this, my son mainly. And he acts, my husband acts like I do nothing, and he's a fucking slob. Uh -huh. And I had to clean up, I spent my whole Saturday cleaning the house while he sat by my parents' pool with the baby, and he still is a prick. Right, so what do you want to say to him? What are the words that you want to fucking say to him? Oh, I just, I've said them before, just fucking clean up after yourself, do something. Yeah, but there's got to be, see, when you get into the details, that's where nobody listens. you got to yeah, say the okay, big like, thing, like the big the thing, thing, like... Is, you, why are you such a fucking asshole? Yeah, you fucking <laughs> suck, and you have zero idea what the fuck is going on in this house. Exactly. You're a fucking child, and you need to... Here's my, here's my, here's my advice. Say it, and then suck his dick while he's thinking about it. <laughs> like, take his dick out, get it hard, and say, listen to me right now. I fucking, I'm fucking tired of being with you because of these reasons, and now I'm going to blow you better than you've ever been blown. <laughs> Suck his dick, let him come on your face, and then let him think about that shit for a while. That sounds perfect. That's man. all. Don't say it while he's, like, try doing something, and, like, he, you don't ruin his fun doing it. Give him fun, and then give him the fucking news. Okay, that sounds perfect. Good luck, Megan. Thanks, all right, somebody else here, Amy. Amy, what's up? Hey, I'm uh, 22. I've been with my fiancé seven years, and his mom is so disrespectful to both me and my entire family, mm -hmm. and I want him to stand up to her and tell her that he loves me and he's with me, and if she can't deal with that, yeah. she needs to grow the fuck up. Yeah, well, it says here on the call sheet, uh, his mom's a cunt. Were those your words? His mom or... is a cunt. Okay, so that's really what's going on. Again, here's maybe this is the difference between the men and the women, because the men say, I want my wife to die. The women say, give give a bunch of list of details. Don't tell them this shit about she's a problem this way. Just say, your mom's a cunt, and I love you. Right? <laughs> the the point is that you, you, you think you're better for him than his mother, Right. Um, no, I just don't want her to feel that I'm not good enough for him. Right, so fu yeah, fuck his, don't fucking even think about his mother. Who gives a shit about his mother? Who gives okay. a shit about her? Don't even think about her, fucking old whore. 
Yeah, she she's awful. Next time you see her, just kick her in the box, and then watch her double over. And then when your and then when your husband walks in, go, I don't know what happened. She's all of a sudden she looks like she's upset. Okay, thanks. Good, good luck, Amy. You. All right, we're gonna take one more call, and then I'm gonna bullshit for half a minute. What's up, Chris? Hey, I love my wife. Someone wanted to tell my wife I love my wife, but I want to fuck your coworkers. Yeah, well. <laughs> You want to fuck? A what? She's a waitress. Yeah. And you know, she, I'm thirty. She's thirty-three. I got a two-year-old and one on the way. Mm-hmm. You know, and we live in a in a college town, and she waitresses, and I go in there to see her for dinner. And all right, you narcissist. I got news for you, buddy. The coworkers don't want to fuck you, so don't bother telling her. Sally, what's up? Hi, honey. What's going on? Good. A nine and a half inch beautiful dick, and he cannot use it. He just learned to fuck, and he can't remember from one time to the next time what I hate and what I don't hate. Oh, that's sad, man. But a nice but dick, though. Beautiful. Life beautiful has its dick. pluses and minuses, and your husband has a great big fucking uh, sideways minus sign. Just absolutely gorgeous to look at, but God, if you can only learn to use it, and you know, you teach him, you try. Maybe you're asking for too much. He's got a nine-inch dick, and he's an asshole. Folks, I really want to thank you for calling. You guys have been really awesome calling here. This is Louis C.K. Uh, thank you, Opie and Anthony, for letting me do this. I don't know if it'll happen again. If it does, uh, listen. Thanks very much for every call. I, uh, you know, try to stay married if you have kids, because it's good to have two parents. Goodbye, it's Louis C.K.